I did find a um if I find it again while I'm doing this, I'll let you know. I'm sorry, whoever that is. I gotta get it where I can get more people in class. Okay, um, so yeah, so this is one picture of the joust of the joust ceremony. This is another image. Look at look at look at how they got a um look at this look at the dummy that they jousting again. See how big it is? Now this allegedly was the size of the Moors generally, as well as them on the, the side or uh when they stand up uh on a horse. But you see it's a black man. You see that, right? And you see all of these devils, you see all these Freemasons here dressing up the way that you used to dress back in the days, right? Looking at the ceremony. Okay, I'll, I'll get back to Tartary in a minute. Okay, here go another one. Look at this one. These niggas really think they doing something too. <laughs> See? See the turban and the helmet? Look at them. Look at them. Now, if we was to go back there right now in mass and be like, we coming back, then 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 they'd be hating. But it's like y'all niggas is acting like us ever since we left. So what the hell you kicked us out for if you were just gonna emulate us? But that's why everybody hates Spanish. That's why the Spanish people are so messed up. People refer to themselves as Spanish, especially when they get caught up in the Latino thing and all that, because they like the fact that they descend from the mestizos, the, the, the conquered ones, the conquerors, the um, conquistadors. They like that. Like that chick, Oscar o Ocasio, Ocasio Cortez. She's a direct descendant of Hernando Cortez. That's why in the last interview she did, she was talking all about how uh, she descends from African slaves and and indigenous so-called people as well as Spanish colonizers. Yes. So yeah, she um she's what you call it. She's a direct descendant of him. So her agenda is not for you. Her agenda is only for thing. Everybody's agenda is about everybody else but you, but Asiatic people born in America. If you're not an American born Meaning if you're not an Asiatic that's not born in America, they'll hook you up. Like I told you last week, oh, I'll do a, also a, a, a correction. Um, MC Light and uh, somebody else, I said, they're not, she's not, um, she's actually born in America. Okay, so let me get to this. course. This is a helmet from 13th century Andalusia. As you can see, this is a helmet from a so-called uh, Tartarin or Tartar. As you see, these are the same, same helmets. <laughs> you see that, right? This is allegedly a uh, 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 Persian. As you see, they have the same conical helmet along with the same gauntlet style thing. Our armor was not big and clunky like that. We would wear what we call mail or chain mail where they get Kevlar and all that from. So what I'm showing you and showing you this is the consistency in terms of the headgear between the barbarians, the Barbary Moors, the Moors, and the traditional Tartarans that they eventually called Mongolians that they eventually call 
excuse me, they eventually call Huns, then Mongolians. Excuse me, Scythians, then Mongolians, then Huns. But all of that is Tartary. Tartary or Tartars is coming to us now from the ancient kingdoms that were there, like I said in the last joint. How what? How what? Uh, I don't, well, the thing is, I don't think that we traditionally as a group of people were in this, what we consider giants. We were definitely taller than we are now. The average height of a standard man or woman going all the way back, maybe about anywhere between six and seven feet. You know, if you were six feet, that was kind of small or whatever. But for the most part, our people weren't the giants. The people who were the giants or the, how we got hooked up with them was in the Bible. It talks about how uh, Allah gave uh, the passage to, jo to Joshua to go and get the Canaanites out of there to seize the land of Canaan. Now, when you read just Circle 7 Quran... It says what? The Canaanites, the Moabites, who else? The Hamathites and the, and the uh, Amalekites or whatever. They went after Joshua displaced them and asked the pharaohs of Egypt to establish um, kingdoms for themselves, being that the Hebrews came out of Egypt first. You understand? Amorites, thank you. When you read the Bible, all of those tribes are giants. All of those people with who they talk about was running it, they were all giants. The Canaanites were giants, the Amorites were giants and all that. So when Canaan fell and these people went and asked permission for it to open it up, the way I'm understanding it is that the world had already existed. It was just that Allah decided that he wanted these, these uh, pre-flood beings who were dealing with all of this crazy stuff and this gigantism and uh, subduing the planet, destroying stuff or whatever, he wanted them dealt with. And in return, we would inherit all of the, the giant so-called citadels and cities that they had been there, that had been there from time immemorial. We became the inheritors of that. So we, in the size we are now story-wise, as far as the Bible is concerned, in the book of Enoch, uh, we went forth and subdued all of these people. OK, so in doing that, uh, those that were left, we basically ran them down to the point where there was almost none of them left. Maybe about a little less than four percent. So when you talk about the. You know, us, you know, taking dominion, doing all of this to these people in the world. After a while. Those that were left now were, in a sense, became vassal kings, those giants or whatever. They now became vassals to us. But remember, the Bible says one of the reasons why they were shut down was because they was out here uh, laying down with the daughters of men and creating Nephilim. And the Nephilim that they created became men of, of world renown, right? Meaning that the descendants of these people that did all of this, these giants or whatever, they're their people went into um, whatever kingdoms or whatever man-made kingdom they was at and basically just ran everything. And people would worship them based upon the fact that they had this DNA in them. What I think happened was when Canaan fell and those so-called giants basically were now displaced and they went and asked the people in Egypt, whatever, whatever, to get where they needed to go. There was a group, there may have been groups of them that were already in there, meaning that they were already half human in the context that they allowed themselves to uh they allowed themselves to become a part of the the natural uh the, they put themselves subordinate under the people who took over everything which was us and so being that these people had that dna in them already because they had already laid with certain Moors and Morrises or whatever, the, the, the daughters of men, they then were able to um, live amongst us. 
you know, those who was those who had that gene. And because they uh, never lost it or always had it, they now were in control. Excuse me. They now were able to pass that down on to us. So some of us have very, very, some of us, some of our families are just very, very tall people. Moors in generally were very tall, you know what I mean? Or taller than Caucasian in general. But this gigantism gene, the thing about it was that we weren't, we were separate from all of this other antediluvian genetics. So I think what happened was Allah wanted us to, to stay somewhat pure from all of that. But for whatever reason, we kept it going. And um, those of us that had that gene kept it going within the bloodline. So it kind of dead it out, kind of bled it uh it kind of went recessive in us because technically that wasn't the genetic structure that we was basically supposed to be a part of anyway. We were supposed to be our own people. We were supposed to be free of all of that. So in it, though, like I said, the Circle 7 gives you a different, another perspective. That's why it's good to read more than one source with stuff like this. Because when you read it in conjunction with the Bible, it kind of makes more sense. In a sense that these descendants of those people who had come down and laid in the door in the bed with the daughters of men and then produced these men of world renown, these were the people who went out and subdued the world. But they were still under the majority people who was running the the the, the country or was running the kingdom, and those were people like us. So it's like when people say, like when you die, you become an angel. Like we can never be, we, we can't be angels. In a sense, in the physical sense, is because Allah made us different from all of that. You understand? So when the prophet said, hold on to your Bibles, I think this is why. Because a lot of that stuff, he said, um, you can hold on to your Bibles because you're going to use them to indict the European. So what this says is when the Moors got here, when the Europeans got here, he said again, that our Moors up and down the Mississippi River. Operate. We can corroborate the United Sorry, somebody's joining one. Hold on. Okay. We can corroborate the giant thing just by looking at the structures, you know, just by looking at all of the stuff that is around us every day. We just not paying attention because all of that history is wrapped up in somewhat in, in allegory as well as oral history. And the cracker taught you not to trust anything that comes from somebody's mouth. So when your ancestors left us certain stories and rituals and things like that, after a certain time, they stopped you from dealing with all that. And what the cracker did was he got the high priest and held them hostage and then basically forced them to tell him what the real deal was with certain things while keeping you ignorant to it in the dark. So that way he could find ways to use it in the future. You know what I'm saying? To preserve his pseudo reign. Okay. So we, when you think about the Hebrew people, if Moors, meaning Asiatics come to you and they say, oh, well, the Hebrew people were, you know, a group of nations, you know, as a nation and stuff like that. What you got to understand is that the Hebrew people, as we understand them, Hebrew just means those who crossed the river, those who crossed over, those who crossed from where they were from. You understand? It don't necessarily, it's not like. There was not a nation in the world called Hebrew. You understand? There were Hebrew nations, but those nations did not call themselves Hebrew nation. You dig what I'm saying? That's what other people refer to them as. Because the term, as we understand Hebrew, is a hodgepodge of a bunch of different cultures. Right? Started with Egypt. Right? Then it went into, um, uh, you got the Egypt culture, you got the Numidian, Abyssinian, Midian cultures. In what they now today call the Arabian Peninsula. Then you have all of the so-called, um, now when you get into the Canaanites and the Amorites and all that, now you're getting into that admixture. So then you have an admixture of now the Canaanite gene, which again is the giant gene. So what I think is that those of them that agreed to, after the fall of Jericho, agreed to follow uh, uh, Yahshua, who they called Joshua, he was able to, uh, they then used, he then used them to help him build or take over the other kingdoms. 
you see? And after a while, when these people converted, like anything else, when they converted to the true faith or whatever, they were allowed to stay, which is why they could open up and set up their own kingdoms. Now, out of those kingdoms, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hamathites, the Amorites and these people, they set up shop in, like I said, the, 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 the far ancient world. Well, that's the thing, man. Um, they were a culture that developed in the so-called Egyptian culture. So you're talking about a culture, a group of people who grew up around another group of people. But that other group of people was the dominant political structure. The same way we live in a world today where Caucasians is running stuff. And we basically are like the, the, the help class, the, the help. I'm excuse me, the so-called servile class is the same way it was then. The only difference was back then you're dealing with people who's the same basic phenotype color, but this the what's different is the status that they're in. You understand? So I'm showing you on your screen. Here you have a, a Moorish helmet from old Barbary, Andalusia, 13th century. Then this is a painting or a picture of an actual Tartar, Tartaran person, right? who again is Asiatic, wearing the same helmet that the Berberi, that the Barber or the Berber Moors wearing. Then next to that, we got a Persian and he got the same thing, same color, same helmet, same uh, battle tactics and a lot of different things. Yet what separates them is separating them in our mind. Here go another one. We, we, we do the work of separating ourselves from the ancient past by looking at them. Yep. Then you got the Garamant, the Garamantes, the Berbers, the Tuareg, the Hausa, all of those are more. This is a more from uh, the Turkic culture who became one of the bays and one of the dignitaries in what we now today call Turkey. But this is again, this, this dress that he had, how he's dressing, that's how the, the, um, the dignitaries in Genghis' court, that's how they used to dress. So as you can see, he's doing his thing. <laughs> Remember, they tell you that under the Moors, the Hebrews, the Christians, and the Muslims were living in such peace that you couldn't tell one from the other. That's a direct quote from Stanley Lane Poole. That's also quoted in Golden Age of the Moor. That's also quoted in uh, uh, the Moors after Spain. It's also quoted in the Golden Age of the Moors. That's a reoccurring theme they keep bringing up. So things were so chill and so peace amongst us under our rule that you couldn't tell the Jew, the Muslim, or the Christian from apart from one another. What does that say? Because under Sharifan law, anybody that lives under the laws of the Sharif is a Moroccan or a Muslim, period. No matter what color you are, you fall under the protection of that. More examples. See? Another, more, Tartary. Right? But they only like to show you white Tartarans. You see what I'm saying? That's the problem. <laughs> we getting caught up because what they do is they throw the race thing in your face to make you think. But see, you and I are Moors. You know what I'm saying? But when we get people who are not necessarily of our phenotype involved with this thing, they now fall under the term more ish or more ish because they're blessed by the Moors. You understand? Or Mord Ayush. They, they are under us. So they're not Moors the way we are, but when they're more ish, these are all of the nations that subscribe to more ideology, to Moorish culture, to barbarian culture or, or Berber culture. You understand? Okay, so I'm just showing you this to show you the different aspects of Moorish Europe 
as well as the Far East. And this is the people who was running it. So the Hebrews themselves who came out of the, the Egyptian so-called culture or whatever and were given dominion. This only happened after Musa, right, well, who was the leader, basically put them on. So more is from the, from the 30s. See, same way we are now, Moors. <laughs> same people doing the same thing. They was trying to get rid of us then and hide our nationality then. So this, this ain't new. Um, let me see. So we always, so you always hear these people talking about the Illuminati and, and these people who did this stuff to us, but one, they keep making it look like it's Caucasians. Two, they constantly put in it in a situation that you was a slave. Three, all of this is predicated on you being a slave. Four, none of that has anything to do with the actual history of what happened. You can't justify who you are if you're referring to yourself in an inferior position. So if you were looking for rights for Asiatic or black people, you would not refer to yourself as a Chinese person, would you? If what you're trying to get is for black people, right, then you wouldn't refer to yourself as a Mexican. You understand? You refer to yourself under the nationality that it is that you would get. The problem is they got more tripping. They got you thinking that you got to be everything to everybody else except for self. They go more evidence of the tartaring Moors in America. Both, though. So you got the Berber type, Moorish type like us, and then you got the more Asian, Asiatic type. But they both is in. This is from a book called Unexplained Faces in Ancient America. Look at the homie. I seen a more who looked just like this today. Had the same low fez too. Same one. This is from over 31, 3100 BC. You understand what I'm saying to you? <laughs> okay, let's read how he described it. It says the classic mocha portrait viewed from Peru, circa 600 BC. This, can't really see it because it's the pixels, but it says this exquisite piece is here with him wearing Moorish looking headdress or heads in color moorish looking heads in color look at this one so here go the straight here go the 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 phenotypical melanated asiatic version from the from the moorish side then here go the side from the Taurus side see the difference but it's the same <laughs> you see both wearing fezzes Both of them in Peru. Both of them American. So what are they talking about? Then when they trace these people back, it's taking them all the way back. These people were speaking a dialect um, closer, close to uh, the ancient Tamil dialect. They call it Rango Rango, but then um, there's, a, there's a, a derivative dialect from that that's spoken by some of the people's in also Madagascar and places like that to this day. So why is this important? This is important because you have people who are calling themselves descendants of slaves that are trying to lump you into this doctrine. You understand? And that is unconstitutional. Everybody's supposed to have a right to a nationality, but slaves don't have no nationality. So if you're saying that you're a descendant from American slave, you're really saying that you're descended from those white Slovakians who was enslaved in America. Because the term slave can only be applied to whose nationality that is reflective of. Do you understand? Do 
you are held and found wanting by your own mouth. Exactly, exactly, terracotta, exactly. So uh, what else, let me show you this. This is humanity. You understand? All of these people, all of these Moors, all of these Asiatics, all of these different whatever, they all have a specific binding fig tree that they under, but the connection is the fact that the Moors were the ones who were doing the international travel to make sure that everybody had what they needed, which is why anybody that lived under the Sharif and uh, kingdoms was seen as an Al Moroccan, you understand? Of which in Spain developed a whole nother culture called the Mozarabs. These were also called the Iberian Christians. These were the ones who, like Alfonso, lived, were Christian. Uh, you know, he was a Tony Moor. He grew up Christian, but he was so enamored with the Moors that he lived as a Moor, even though. He was basically Catholic. That Alfonso eventually wound up um, fighting against the Moors and everything. And then years later, century or some odd later, they send people to the Congo to meet their king, whose name was also Alfonso, Alfonso the First. And what he decided to do was establish a situation where they would all be subordinate to Portugal. So that king created a trade network with Portugal and then sent all of his nobles and stuff to Portugal to be converted to Christianity and all that. And these were the so-called ones who met up in so-called Portugal under King Henry the Navigator and came over here as conquistadors to take our land. Them with the Portuguese and them type of people, the Africans. These same descendant Africans was the ones that was basically working with the colonial powers over here to enslave us. How can we show and prove that? Well, let me get this. So Hebrew, as much as it's a people, it's a culture. You understand? It's a culture comprised of 12 different expressions of that culture. Really 13, if we talk about the so-called lost tribes or the 12 tribes, because the Hebrews themselves were not one type of people, meaning that they were Asiatic or melanated to a degree, but they were from different tribes that were from the lower class that grew up in Egypt. You understand? And then after a while, consolidated themselves and decided to leave once Musa came and decided that he was going to give them their own land. And so there was the exodus where they left. Once they left, they was on their own. And one thing about the Israelites, when you read that Bible, they was all man hard headed. How many times did Musa have to go through stuff while he went up into the mountain? These people, as soon as he left, they made a golden calf, right? started worshiping in it and sacrificing people to it and all that. That's not what we was doing in Canaan. While all of this is going on, the Canaanites, the giants, and these people that was in there, and the Amorites and these other kingdoms that was around, they was dealing with their own foolishness. So Allah come and say, we're going to get rid of all of this. And so the Hebrew people, you understand, consolidated themselves as a nation and started a war campaign to rack up all of the ancient kingdoms from the ancient world. We read about this in, in, in uh, 
what is it? Uh, Genesis. We read about it in, in uh, Leviticus. We read about it in Deuteronomy. We read about it in 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 3 Kings. But we're not doing the knowledge. We think, oh, Goliath was the giant. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we read this. They read us the story of David and Goliath and stuff and made it seem like that's the only one. But Goliath had two brothers. He was the youngest of two brothers. So here on your, your, your uh, screen, this is the king of the Mughal Empire. Look at him. <laughs> and the Mughals was another intermediate empire uh, from Persia. So this is a conglomeration of Moors, uh, Persians, and Tartarans in one kingdom. You see? That's why they're in different complexions. You see? But the one running it all, look, the more. You see? But when you claim more, you are claiming Hebrew. That's what I'm trying to say. It's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. The problem is they got you creating the, the, the thing, the delineation the, the in your mind. We are looking at it from the opposite perspective. Our ancestors didn't do that. Right. There's no such thing as an Arab. Arab means Morab. Morab is where you get Arab from. Morabic. Mauritanian. It's all the same thing. They just took the M-A-U off and they just left the Arab. These so-called, the, the term Arab, as we understand it, wasn't even used until 1914. <laughs> it was a word of art in the 1800s and then became a, a lexicon word that people started identifying themselves after the British imposed that designation on them through a guy named T.S. Lawrence. T. S. Lawrence. Prior to that, them people was whatever they tribe or their nationality was. You understand what I'm saying? The word water and wet, right, both mean the same thing, but you can't necessarily use them interchangeably. If I say I want to drink some wet, you can't do that. But I'm still talking about water, though, right? Just like I can't say I want to go swimming, you know what I mean? I want to go swimming in the wet. I want to go drink some wet. No, you say I want to drink water. And then once you're in the water, you get wet. You see? So when Moors tell you that the word more and black is interchangeable, they're lying to you. And then the first thing they're going to tell you is that, oh, this come that come from the Greek word. Well, are you Greek? And if you aren't, then why are you allowing a Greek person to define what you are? Does anybody else do that? Do you go to an Ethiopian person and he tell you your name is Ross Ben and you look at him and say, oh, well, that's not really your name. Your, your name that really come from Abyssinia. Are you saying that to them? No. No, you're not. The only time it comes in a problem with you is when you have to define yourself. So they want you to be a more, they want Moors to be Muslims. They want Moors to be uh, Arabs. They want Moors to be uh, uh, whatever they say we are. But what do you say you are? And how is it that everybody else can have their own vine and fig tree? They are not going to Filipinos and telling the Filipinos that they're really African. So they should give up being Filipino and go and be an African. Do, you, do they tell them that? No. Do they go to people in India, Dravidians, Centralese, Jawaran people and tell them, yo, you're really from Africa. So what y'all should do is y'all should basically repatriate back to Africa. Do they do that to them? No, they don't. Why? Why is it that it's so important for you to be African? That's the question. It's not about whether it means black or not, is the fact that they are using words of art to describe something that's outside of that. You understand what I'm saying? 
is really not perplexing. It's the fact that they're making it, they're, they're playing on your confusion. When the term more really mean love. That's what it really mean. But the people who referred to Moors were darker skinned. But darker skinned people in the modern 20th century are referred to as black. You understand? So because Moors are of a darker hue, and in this epoch in time, they are referring to people with darker hues as black, you see, they therefore they assume that Moors are black. But black is not a color, it's a status when it comes to description of an individual. Do you understand? Therefore, when you say that Moors are black, you're not talking about their skin color. You're trying to denationalize them and talk about the status that black people have today. And Moors were never in that status. We the ones that called stateless Moors black. Do you understand what I'm saying? Just because a Greek in the Greek language, more or mortis means uh, black, that does not mean that mores are defined by what the Greek call itself. You understand? That's like them telling you that you African American. How are they going to tell you that you are African American and you ain't never been to Africa? Because at one point in our history, everybody that was melanated had to be find their origin back here. But I'm showing you right here. I'm showing you the demarcation line between the father and the son. Misraim was over here. You see what I'm saying? Egypt is over here. <laughs> Misraim is Missouri. Misraim, Missouri, Muskogee, Mosque. See what I'm saying? It's all the same thing. You are separating it in your mind because they got you thinking that you foreign. So they, they want you to be an African-American. They want you to be a descendant of a slave. Right. But they don't want you to do anything that gives you dominion over the land again. So they need you to be African. They need you to be African-American. So that way you don't claim none of the estates that's here for you. And they can continue to rock it under this Freemasonic BS. Look, this how much, this how together we was. This is a coin they found here in America around that mosque that we built in the third century, the Christian church mosque we built in uh, Kakaponset. Look, what's that? Oh, I thought this was the symbol of Islam. I thought this was the symbol of Hebrews. So how are they both together? Do the knowledge. Then the Satanists came and took this part, right? And then turned this into the symbol for the church of Satan. The Jews took this part and made this on the flag of Israel. But in our cosmogony, all of this is together. <laughs> So when I tell you that Moors are Hebrews and Hebrews are Moors, it's the same thing. The difference, though, is the tribe that we Moors are coming from. We were the tribe that all of the other tribes low key hated on <laughs> and low key felt wasn't all the way in because of the fact that we were descended of the giants. That we also had members of us that had giant gigantor or, or what they call titanothroat DNA in us. Because we descend from those giants that after the fall of Canaan and they decided to convert to Hebrewism or whatever and work with us to get rid of all the dirty giants, the Titans and all of them. And then these were the ones that King Shaddad, a.k.a. King Kafu, that I talked to in the last tape about. These are the ones that went and we now had them as vassals and had them basically build the kingdoms and, and build the pyramids and all that stuff for us in our name. So they got you thinking that the aliens built the pyramids. They got you thinking that this one built the pyramids and it ain't. It had nothing to do with that. It was your people who had control of these giant giant or these giant, excuse me, these titanothropes. Because everything was big back then. 
both before the flood and after. Research the cedar trees of Lebanon. It is in the Bible. That's why the prophet said, Moors, don't get rid of your Bible. I'm going to have you use them to indict the European. <laughs> but what people do is they put their energy on it. What they See, the Bible, the thing about the Bible is the Bible is a grimoire. But it's the type of grimoire that it can be whatever type of thing. Whatever you want to use it for, you can use it for that. And you can pop off whatever you're doing. Just like in the book of Eli, when he was trying to get the Bible and he was like, look, this book make you control everything. Right. Around the, around the coin, it says Allah, the, the, the most beneficent and merciful. La ilaha illallah illallah. Remember, Yahweh was El first. And the Hebrews changed Yahweh to Il. Look. Now how intricate this is. This gilding, this gold and silver, this is a gold and silver war helmet. This is how we was banging on these devils. Look, this one was found in Andalusia. Look, this one right here, this one was found in, in Spain. Excuse me, in America. <laughs> in America, fam. So in America, in the, in the 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th century, the way that the Moors was dressing over there in Andalus, the way that they was dressing in Tartary is the same way they were dressing here. This is the uniform. This is the armor. So why are we creating all of these different things in our mind? Why? Because they want you to be a slave. They want you to be foreign from here. Because all these niggas, anybody telling you anything other than you being born here, born here, you being indigenous to the land here, you being a part of the Moorish Empire here is your enemy. They trying to denationalize you. They trying to put you in a trick bag. And they trying to ship you across the water so you could be an African. I was doing some knowledge and found out that uh, your man Marcus Garvey, he was also friends with, uh, he was down with the uh, American Colonial Society to colonialize, to colonize Liberia. And now he was down with um, um, the dude William Pleckler who was the one that redesignated all of the black, all of the original Moors and made them into Negroes, black and colored, and then gave the descendants of the Mongol invaders the right to be so-called natives. This is Marcus Garvey, man. Another, somebody not from America, and again, I'm not trying to diss him because obviously there was something true about him if the prophet was dealing with him. But at the same time, the prophet never talked all that. The prophet came and cleaned all the stuff he was doing up. Because when you research the Royal Ethiopian Order and affiliated organizations, you know what you're going to find? You're going to find this or this these organization, one organization called the Nubian Islamic Hebrews. You're going to find the Moorish Zionist Temple of Moorish Jews of Harlem. You're going to find the Moorish uh, Hebrew Islamic Collective. You're going to find all of this stuff with all these different groups adjacent to the UNIA. They only talk to you about Garvey and the prophet, but they ain't talking to you about everything else. Dr. York claimed what he was doing under the Nubian Islamic Hebrew line. And then from there, flipped it up and went under the Moorish Zionist Hebrew line by going into the temple. You see? So these Hebrews that's out here today, these, these barbarian looking, these, these crazy dudes, they have nothing to do with the original stuff that was happening. Just like a lot of these dirty Moors and these reorganized temples don't have nothing to do with how the temple structure was prior to 1928, 1929. Yeah, he got locked up. <laughs> they locked him up for fraud. Because, again, you trying to go in there and colonize other people, but you talking shit about the white man. Think about that. You talking all of this about the white man, how devil was this, this he is or whatever. And you from Jamaica, you telling you ain't never been to Africa, but you saying that this is where we all got to go. This is consistently going on at the same time. The American 
colonial society is still trying to send people over to Liberia and colonize them Africans over there from here. And who's doing that? Black Freemasons. Black Freemasons is pumping that. All of the first presidents of, of Liberia is all American black Freemasons, Prince Hall's in them. They ain't even send no Muslims over there to colonize them people. And you wonder why Liberia went through everything that it went through with the civil wars and all that? Because they set up a caste system over there that they just dealing with. So the prophet came and the prophet is the one saying, no, we was always here. We were not Negro, black and colored. We are American citizens. We are a part of the Al Moroccan empire. Like, look at what he did. He consolidated everything that everybody was 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 harping on to pop off their stuff because you were asleep. He did it. So you got the Hebrew Israelites that's out here saying that they not Moors. You got the Moors saying that they not Hebrews. But all of the imperial evidence shows that we was all together because, like I said, when you read these texts, it said that the Moors, the Muslims, and the Christians live together in such harmony that you could not tell one from the other. So what are they talking about? I just showed you the headgear from three different empires. Allegedly going through three different epochs in time. Right. And each one got the same variation of the same joint, but they different people. Right. Moors have nothing to do with Tartary. Right. Tartary got nothing to do with Moors. Right. But they all Asiatics. They all dark skin. They all was controlling parts of Europe as well as the rest of the world. They were in the Congo, but remember the Congo Moors, they were the ones that the Congo Asiatic, excuse me, the Congo Africans, because that's what they are. Those Africans in the Congo all converted to Christianity and the Christianity ones hooked up with the, the mulatto tawny uh, colonial powers. And they both worked together to destabilize all of the Moorish kingdoms, all of the Tartarian kingdoms and everything after that. So it was the African working with the colonialists to come over here and take your land. The Africans are the ones that deal with the tribalism. The Africans are the ones that's dealing with the with the with the Christianity. There's more Christians in Africa than anywhere in the world. Think about that. Here go another question. How is it that African countries all got English names? Tell me. Explain that to me. Explain that to me. To the point when you go to these places in these people's country and you get off the plane or whatever, the name is still in English. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is the African Christian Freemason conquistador worked with the colonial so-called tawny uh, amalgamated uh, 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 W-I-G-H-T people to come over and destabilize everything to be able to put everybody under the vine and fig tree of Satan. This is how deep it is. Read this. This is from a book you should get called uh, Slave Revolts in Baha'i and Brazil. Sheikh Abu Alafa Mohammed Sharif bin Farid said on page four. In fact, because the African Muslim revolts, African Muslim is Moors, African Muslim re revolts against slavery began as far back in mainland America as 1511. Think about what I'm saying. So this means before King James created the Bible in 1611, before the Geneva Bible was rediscovered in 1599, the so-called Muslims, the Moors in America, was rebelling against the dirty Moor, so-called conquistador Africans, so-called colonialist people coming over here and shutting us down. 
when Mohammed Sanbu, it's really Sanbei, led a two-month insurrection in league with other Fulbe and African Muslims in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, that the real American Revolution did not begin in 1776 when the Anglo-Americans decided they had had enough of their British overlords. But the real American Revolution began and continued from 1511 with Mohammed Sambu and persisted in 1812 with Mohammed Bilali, Bilal Bile Ali and his comrades, brave military assistants to who? The Anglo-Americans against the British on the sea islands off the coast of Georgia and South Carolina. That's the Gullah Wars they talking about. Why are they not telling you that Muslims worked with the British, with the so-called uh, American government to shut the British down during the Gullah Wars off the coast of Georgia and South Carolina? They make it seem like there was no Muslims here. <laughs> Think about it, Moors. In the mid-17th century, the impact upon the thinking and lives of African-American revolutionaries, such as Denmark Vesey, who became a Muslim at the hands of the enslaved Fulbe Muslims that he was fighting with under Umar ibn Said. Now remember, they deposed the Moors in 14, 1492. So these Moors that you hear right here being enslaved, these are the Moors that were shipped to Spanish Louisiana after the Reconquista to be slaves and they fought against it. Let's go further. Denmark Vesey, who was a Muslim. So they talk about Denmark Vesey being a great revolutionary and abolitionist and all this. But how come they ain't tell you that he was a Muslim? David Walker, who became a Muslim at the hands of the enslaved Fulbe Muslim, Abdir Rahman, Abd Rahman Ibn Ibrahim Sori. And who? Frederick Douglass who was a direct descendant of the above mentioned Fulbe Muslim Mohammed Bil Ali. So you mean to tell me Frederick Douglass is a direct descendant from the Moor who started the American Revolution in Louisiana? But y'all niggas is never, nobody is talking about this? How many years you didn't heard Frederick Douglass name come up? When has anybody ever talked about his connection to the Moors? I'll wait. This book been out. <laughs> this book been out. How come these African scholar niggas ain't never tell you that? How come Ivan Van Sertema and, and Dr. Ben and Chancellor Williams and all of these dudes talking to you with all about us going back to Africa, never talking to us about what we had here, with the exception maybe of Ivan Van Sertema? It persisted through the great Seminole Wars where the African Muslims, when we say African Muslims, just flip that for Moors, where the Moors in confederation with the Seminole Nation. So again, this is an example. This is proof that you have Moors working with indigenous Seminoles to fight against the cracker in free Florida together. But these niggas want to tell us that we're something different. That's why these niggas is full. That's why they all, all of these dudes gonna go in the fire. All of these dudes been lying. All of these dudes been creating false history and they get mad at us more specifically when we start coming up with stuff that ain't nobody heard before because this is all the stuff that they've been hiding. Finally, in 1864, when Mohammed Nicholas Said led the Northern African Corps into the Southern states in their victory against the Anglo-American slavery. 1864, this is the year before the Civil War started, Moors. This man went in and shut it down and won the victory against the Anglo-American slavery. So what are they saying? What are they talking about the Civil War shit? 
Where is that coming from? If we just read that in 1864, when Mohammed Nicholas Syed led the Northern Union African Corps into the Southern states in their victory against the Anglo-American slavery. So what, they started slavery after they lost to the Moors? I'm showing and proving, man. Explain that. It is in this light that the African-American revolt in Bahia in Brazil from 1807 to 1835 must be understood and considered, meaning that this was a global situation. We, wherever we was at, was banging on the Spanish. Wherever we was at, we was banging on these niggas. You understand? We the Moors, we the only ones on file banging on this devil like this. These Africans was the ones helping them. They was helping them. He lying. The family came out and said that he lying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like these niggas will say anything because Freemasons are liars. You can never trust a Freemason. Ever. Unless they repent. Unless they come free and get absolved out of that stuff from a moor. I'm showing and proving more. Look. That's why they hate Moors. That's why they don't want us to get into it. Because if you read anywhere where Moors is at, we running, we running things. We conquering things. We shutting it down. We protecting people. We bringing information. We bringing civilization. These Africans is, is drinking milk out of a cow's behind to get their balls big. These Africans is these Africans is doing female circumcisions on little girls under the age of 13 and then having sex with them. These Africans is kidnapping albinos, mutilating them, harvesting their organs, grinding their bones to dust to do magic and, and heal things with, with situations. And you saying that I'm descended from them people? No, no, no. I don't drink milk out of a damn carton, so I damn sure ain't going to drink it out of a cow's behind, okay? We are different. We have a succinct destiny, a succinct destiny that Allah has for us, and it is not predicated on what anybody else say. All they want to do is kick us out of all of the ancient and ancient tenure and ancient grace and wisdom and understanding that our ancestors left that these niggas then created to be something else. All they want to do is write us out of that. Oh, Moors ain't Hebrew. Moors ain't this. Moors ain't that. Moors enslaved us. Moors did this. Moors did that. Why? Why are you always pointing fingers at Moors, but you letting these Africans rock? These Africans don't give a damn about us. That place that they, they tell you that's, that's out there, where they say that's the door of no return, where all the so-called slaves went out and all of that. You know what that really was? That was a place where the people in that land would throw their garbage out. <laughs> there is no imperial evidence. There is no imperial evidence that the Africans sold anybody. None. None. You know why? Because all of them converted to Christianity and started to work with the devil. It started to work with the European colonialists to destabilize the greater Moorish Empire. And those of us in Barbary and those of us in Tartary was not having it. We even got into beef at one point. We even got into a, a fight with each other. Trying to bang on this devil. Where they said that the Mongols and the Muslims or the Moors got into a um got into a battle. And at that battle, that was the first battle that we used gunpowder. I'm gonna get the name of the battle right now. Hold on. So you can look it up yourself. 
the way I know is something, I did this tape or whatever, uh, the, the Tartary thing and blew it, you know, everybody going in on it. Then some, some dude, some illiterate dude, this dude can't even write. Talking about don't steal his research. Like what? But want to use my name. All of these white people talking about this stuff. All of these other people, Caucasian people, Russian people, all these other people on the internet talking about it. The minute that I say something, you dig what I'm saying? The minute I say something, the minute the more say something, here come a dirty ass Freemason, a dirty ass nigga can't even write, going to tell me that we taking something from him. So what I'm saying, Moors, it's always some, it's always a nigga. It's always somebody that look like you that's trying to rain on your parade. They want to tell you what you saying ain't. But 50 million crackers out here, 50 million people not saying nothing. It's sick, more. They sick. And they want to be everything else. They want to be slaves. They want to be uh, 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 Indians. They want to be whatever. They want to be everything but they damn self. And if it wasn't for your profit and mine, these niggas wouldn't know nothing. They wouldn't know who they are. The prophet was the first one to bring Islam here to America. And when they brought that dirty ass African, Sat, what was his name, Sati Masjid, over here to challenge the prophet, the Freemasons in the, in the country told that nigga to get out of here. You better leave that prophet alone. They ain't telling, they ain't telling you that, though. Because they're all scared that you coming up with who you are, who we are. We are, again, right here, it says, look, that battle was called the Battle of uh, Ein, Ein Jat. Yeah, God, these niggas are straight slaves. These niggas ain't got no nationality talking, sh talking crap, man. Running behind these, these Europeans, running behind them. Don't say nothing about them. They can say whatever. The minute or more start saying anything and claiming what is ours, these niggas want to come and act like, nigga, you can't even talk. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? These niggas can't even read, write, con construct they, 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 they protocols properly. But, the, but they, they, they unify against the Moors, though. And I want y'all to peep that. Always, they just hate us. They just hate us. And it's like, why? What did we? What did the Moors do to you? Half of you niggas didn't even know what a Moor was until a year and a half ago. Half these Aboriginal or Tonkin, whatever you call these people, half these people was asleep in the church yesterday. But now they want to come out, follow behind what these niggas doing, and half these niggas talking this Aboriginal shit. They all selling Moorish paperwork. They selling Moorish paperwork on the low. The main ones, the biggest names that you talking about in this, these are the niggas that's doing it. You can't throw stones and hide your hands, man. That's how you know they all Freemasons. <laughs> that's how you know. I am an equal opportunity banger. I will bang on the Jesuits. The Jews, the Freemasons, the Negroes, the this one, it don't matter who they are. It don't matter because all of them have worked to hide and get rid of our people's empire and is living off of it now. All of them. Can't find it. But here, here you go. This is from a book called... Um, Pioneers of France in the New World. <laughs> Islam. Look, it is lawful. It is lawful that your majesty, like a good shepherd, appointed by the hand of the eternal father, should tend and lead out your sheep since the Holy Spirit has shown us spreading pastures. We're on feeding lost sheep, which have been snatched away by the dragon, the demon. These pastures are the new world, wherein is comprised Florida, now in possession of the demon. And here he maketh himself adored and revered. See how they hate us? This is the land of promise, possessed by the idolaters. And who are that? 
the Amorite, the Amalekite, the Moabite, and the Canaanite. This is the land promised by the eternal father to the faithful since we are commanded by God in the Holy Scriptures to take it from them. And by reason of their idolatry and sin, to put them all to the knife leaving no living thing save maidens and children, their cities robbed and sacked, their walls and houses levied to the earth. They left the women and the children so that way they can have sex with the women and then produce a generation of children that are now born on that land, uh, infused with the rape demon, so this way they can, they can veer off where the culture, where the society was going prior to the invasion. But why is the history of Florida relevant to Ohio history? Well, according to Parkman, the name Florida, as the Spaniards of that day understood it, comprehended the whole country extended from Atlantic on the east to the longitude of New Mexico on the west, from the Gulf of Mexico and from the River of Palms and definitely northward to the Polar Sea. Islam. So when I say I'm in Florida, I'm saying I'm in all of America. You understand? This is Andalusia. This is Spain. This is why these devils came over here after we fell over there. This is why they enslaved our people. This is why Grenada is called Grenada because Grenada is Grenada. <laughs> That's why they, of all of the islands that they invaded in the Caribbean, you mean to tell me the only one that they invaded was Grenada? Think about that, Moors. <laughs> Think about that. All the islands, they didn't even invade Cuba the way that they wanted to, but you invaded Granada, though. Anybody have any questions before I get into this part? Uh, I don't, um, I, I tend to, I, I'm not into the propaganda. That's propaganda. That's not real history. That's propaganda. And it's you, it was used, the Moorish thing to me was used to bring people into that and then bring them right back into the slave, Negro, black, colored, white supremacy, white man, God stuff. So I don't, I, I stopped watching it after the first one. <laughs> then there was a low key petition to get me on it. And I told those moors, don't even do that, man. They don't want they don't want somebody like me on that stuff. You dig? And they don't want that. So in the Circle Seven Quran, they got a picture of Abdul Aziz, the Arab dude, who allegedly gave the prophet a thing. Well, this is the real Abdul Aziz. I told you, these Negroes want to stay everything but Moors. They'll be everything but Moors. Because the Moorish thing means they have to really be about the real. And they got to stand for something. They don't want to do that. These niggas want to eat pork. These niggas want to have sex with white women. They want to be able to, to uh, get paid from white people. This is what they want. They want to be Christian. They want to do everything. But be they self. This right here is Abdul Aziz. So I don't know why this picture of him, this ain't the picture they put in the Circle 7, but whatever. I'm going to show you another one of him, too. This right here is a more from Tartary, what they now call Russia. Okay? The British guard 
takes this is this is the headdress that the British guard wears. You understand, Moors? This is a Moor from the same place they say Genghis Khan and the rest of these people at from the 1900s, Moor. This right here, this is Rabbi Ben Ford. Excuse me, this is Rabbi Ford. So he was probably in the Royal Egyptian, Royal Ethiopian order. This is Rabbi Ford. This is the Moor who was a part of the UNIA, but was the rabbi for the original Canaanite temple and all of that. He's the one who built with the prophet. He's the one who told the prophet that he should, he should, uh, they should add the noble titles again, the seven titles, Il Bey Day El uh, Ali Pasha and Allah. He the one told. So how are we not Hebrews? How are we not connected? Don't we keep the holy day? Don't we keep the Sabbath? Don't we keep that holy? We do, right? Don't we cover our head in supplication to Allah? Don't 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 we we show respect to Allah by by donning our fez and not taking it off in any Christian around any Christian anything like that? Don't we do that? Do we kill animals to eat? No, we don't do that neither, do we? <laughs> no, we don't. Are we trying to impose our, our so-called ideology on other Moors, on other people? No, we don't do that neither, do we? No. So, so how are we not Hebrew? Don't, didn't the prophet said, Moors don't throw away your Bible? Didn't he say that? Don't our, don't our circle seven fill in the blanks between the Bible, between the time that Esau was 13 to 36, excuse me, 13 to 33? Here go another picture of Abdul Aziz. Look. Come on, Moors. Don't this picture make more sense than the Arab picture they put in that speech? And look what he's wearing. He's wearing a Moorish, a Moroccan Diljaba, right? Standing in the doorway. <laughs> this the Sultan. This is him. But no, they show us the picture of the old Arab. But you understand that there was like five different. Yeah, I switched mine for this. <laughs> and the other one. Quick, fast. Once I came across this picture, I was like, oh, no, this Arab coming out of my joint. <laughs> and I just flipped it. So how are we not in Tartary? How are we not Asian? How are we not Asiatic? How, how is that? Especially, like I said, they wrote a book about it. I told you, I'll get that book on the Mongol invasion. But the problem also is we're not defining who exactly it was. Who did this? Who? Illuminati. Who's that? Yup, that's one of them. The Sassoon family was one of them. But look, let's let's get into it. Let's show it. So they don't think we both BSing. Uh, there's a guy on YouTube named uh, Webster Tarpley. Uh, he is a, a economist, and uh, he's a he's like a pundit. He be on like different radio shows and stuff, talking about the talking about the the uh, Illuminati and all that stuff. But more from a stoic, more his stuff is more stoic. And more um, like you got to be into um, information, history, how it plays together for you to not fall asleep on this nigga. But uh, he's still, you know, he's a Freemason. He down with them people or whatever. But uh, in terms of how he he breaks certain things down, he be on point with certain things. Now, he is into big government. He is into that. He is down with these people to a degree. But some of the stuff he's talking about with the Venetian thing is on point. I have been talking about the, the Venetian oligarchy and the so-called uh, doges of Venice uh, in a lot of the in some of the tapes that I've done in, in that's on Gumroad right now. But I wanted to go get more specific so you see exactly who these people are and how it did that. 
So when we talk about uh, this is the symbol. When you see the symbol with the lion with the wings, that's really an old uh, Canaanite symbol. But it was adopted by the Venetians. It's also an old symbol of Phoenicia when we was Phoenicians, Carthaginians, the winged lion. So wherever you see the winged lion, that's really a symbol of Phoenicia. It's really a symbol of old Carthage. But in this era with the devils we dealing with, this is the symbol of the so-called Venetians. So any type of time you see a bank or anything with this on it, that means that this is most likely owned by them. Okay. So we get into the old, so we'll get into that. So this is what they kind of look like. See the dark ones? Sit behind the white one. This allegedly is Aristotle. This allegedly is Averroes, who they call uh, Abyssinia. But he was a Moor from Cordoba. He was half original though. Anyway, uh, the people who ran Venice were called the Doge, the Doges. Venice itself was established um, on a conclave, meaning that after the fall of Rome, when the Moors went in and shut everything down, all of the, the wild uh, Germanians who were Visigoths and stuff like that, they started to wage war against those who was under them. And a lot of them was the so-called people who eventually become Venice. So at the time, it was more like a swamp thing or whatever. So they all ran into that area and stayed there, stayed basically in the swampy areas or whatever, and then decided that they were going to basically build a, a society, you know what I mean, that was basically going to be in the vein of how the old Phoenician society was, being that the Moors was now in control of Europe, totally in control of Europe. You have to understand the so-called kingdom of James and them that started in around 927. Then around 967, excuse me, 962, is it? No, 927. I believe the Holy, Holy Roman Empire was founded by Otto and Edith in 962. So from 927 to about 1707, the black nobility under James, the Moors um, up under there, them Christian Nazarene Moors, was running everything. That's why we call that the house. That's why we call it the United Kingdom. Because it's the kingdom of Yakub and the descendants of the of the 12 tribes and all that. So James was claiming descent as the king of them directly, which is why he used the, the lion. Because you had the county of Anjou, who where we get the Jews from, and then the, the, the so-called tribe of Judah, those Jews were all together. So in Spain, remember, the Moors had been there from the 7th century. So from the 7th century, remember, so that's 7, 8, 9. So it wasn't until the 9th century, let's say, after the, the establishment that the so-called Christian Nazarene Moors in Europa established their kingdoms. So think about that. While like this was happening on this side of the world, over in Tartary, over in, in Asia or whatever, you got the same thing. You got the birth of people like Attila, you see? And Attila basically starts to leave the way for his descendants, people like T Timor, again, Timor, who they call Tamerlane, and then eventually the great Genghis, and then from there, Kublai, okay? So during that whole epoch of time, all of those lands over there is going through an upheaval, okay? So Venice itself at this time is, is being, you know, run in. There are good reasons, nevertheless, for believing that Islam continued to haunt Ignatius. Ignatius Loyola is the head of the Jesuit order. He was the first Jesuit general. He was a recon. He was about the reconquista, and he was a black man, a self-hating nigga who decided that he was going to work against the Moors. Right. So this is a little anecdote about him. There are good reasons, nevertheless, for believing that Islam continued to haunt Ignatius' understanding of his calling. A curious incident early in the pilgrimage uh, narrative gives us a clue. It 
It is an encounter between a pilgrim and a Moor, whom he meets as he makes his way through the Spanish countryside. Here is how he tells the story in hindsight. As he continued on his way, a Moor riding on a mule caught up with him. In their conversation, they began to speak about Our Lady. The Moor said it certainly seemed to him that the Virgin had conceived without the aid of man, but he could not believe in giving he could not believe that in giving birth, she remained a virgin. Islam. To substantiate his opinion, he offered the natural reasons that occurred to him. Though the pilgrim countered with many arguments, he could not alter the Moor's opinion. You see that? The Moor then went on ahead in great haste so that he lost sight of him. Being left behind. He reflected on what took place between him and the Moor, and various emotions welled up in him and became disturbed in his soul, thinking that he had failed to do what he should have done. Filled with anger against the Moor and thinking that he had done wrong in allowing the Moor to utter such things about Our Lady, he concluded and he was obliged to restore her honor. Now he desired to search out the Moor and strike him with his dagger for all that he had said. This conflict and his desires remained with him for some time, but in the end, he was still uncertain for he did not know what was required of him. So you see right there, he could not change the Moor's mind and the Moor hit him with the ill logic. How is she going to be a virgin? No doubt she might have been a virgin in what you call it in in the conception, but she definitely wasn't a virgin when she had him. Islam, that's Morris science. That's common sense. She can't be a virgin if she gave birth because he came through the birth canal. That's it. And because this nigga had no knowledge, no way to rebut the more. This is the nigga that started the reconquista. This is the nigga that hired El Cid to cut off all them more's heads. And we see why. It started from this. You see? As giving precious, and the more, look what happened. It said that the more rode off and left him behind. This is why they hate us. Everybody feel like that about the moors. I ain't talking about the dirty moors. I'm talking about the real ones. The real ones that can do stuff like that. Look at what this one conversation Ignatius Loyola had with this, this moor. had this one conversation with this Moor, which led to 250 years of murder of Moors. All because no matter what, you could not change these Moors' opinion, and that's what makes us Moors. You want me to take this Fez off? No. So what Dracula do, and out of frustration, he nailed the Fez to the Moors' head. So now you'll never take it off. Not much of a hater you gotta be. Because these niggas that's in these things, they don't believe what it is that they are part of. Ignatius Loyola didn't believe in the real thing. He didn't believe in Mary. He didn't believe in none of that. Because if he did, he wouldn't have had that much disdain for somebody who was probably done with the whole conversation once he left. The more you see what it said, the more rode off and left him to his own devices. He didn't care. No, your man, no. Your man, he, he's sitting there stewing in it because he's a Freemason. And this is how these Freemasons are with you today. Anybody that's speaking against the Moors most likely is a Freemason. Most likely is a part of some order or something that he doing. They definitely miseducated. Yeah, and I'm telling you, one conversation with this Moor led into 230 years of repression. Moors, that's what I'm telling you. This is how much your opinion matters. Like I said last week, Moore, do you understand that Moors got this dude, Oscar the Priest, the first black man voted into the Senate in the 1920s, Moore? In the 20s? When niggas had no knowledge of self? We block voted it. We all voted for one dude and they had to count our vote as many but one. And it got them in without us having to be citizens of the United States. When it said we American citizens, it says that we in the republic. 
It says Americans. He, the prophet said American citizens. He didn't say United States citizens, did he? Look at this black man. Look at this self-hating black man right here. Ignatius Loyola. He's the Jes one that set up the Jesuit fourth vow. No, I'm sorry. This is Paolo Sarpi. Remember last week I was talking to you about the, the, the Venetian oligarchs. So it started with Ignatius Loyola. This dude right here, Paolo Sarpi, this is Loyola's bodyguard. Okay. He was an Italian historian, a prelate scientist, a canon lawyer, which means he was a Jesuit, and statement active on behalf of the Venetian Republic. During this period of su successful defiance of the papal in interdict, the interdict. That's a whole nother thing. I ain't got time to go into that. Um, and it's war with Austria to fight over the Usok, the Uskok pirates. The Uskok pirates was a version of Tartarin pirates. Most from Tartar. Uh, his writings frequently polemically and highly critical of the Catholic Church. In other words, the historical of ecclesiastical benefits, historically of the interdict, and the supplement of the history of the Usaks appeared post hominously, meaning when he died. This is a Wikipedia uh, definition as well. Um, Sarpi attended, attained fame as a hero of republicanism and free thought, and possibly, and possibly a crypto Protestant. Really, he was a Jew. A converted Jew. Uh, his last words, esto, esto perpetua, may she, the Republic, live forever, right? Were recalled by John Adams in 1820 in a letter to Thomas Jefferson when Adams wished his devoutly father Paul the preservation of, the va of our vast American empire and our free institutions. So John Adams, two presidents of the United States, were into Sarpy basically followed the Sarpy method. The Sarpy method is war through um, uh, control through religious war. These are some of the books that Sarpy wrote. Sarpy is a big, he big, big, big in Italian Freemasonic circles. A lot of people into him. Another person Sarpy influences is Darwin, Newton, Adam Smith, Adam Weishaupt, uh, Alexander Hamilton, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams. Uh, who else was in, was influenced by him? Lenin, Marx, all of these people influenced by Sarpy. Sarpy was the, uh, was the fixer for Ignatius Loyola. Okay. So Sarpy was the one that would, so when people wanted to talk to Loyola, they would have to go through Sarpy. Sarpy then was an agent who would then go to the different kingdoms and he was trying to, they were trying to work to get rid of King, uh, James's kingdom by destabilizing all the monarchies because the Venetians believed that they were the continuation of Phoenicia, Venice, Venice, Phoenix, Phoenix, same thing. They believed that they were the, the, they were the rightful heirs to the, to the, to the, uh, uh, Carthaginian Phoenician trade empire. Only difference is Venice ain't produced nothing. See, the Phoenicians, they produced the murex, the dye, the purple dye that people would buy in different parts of the world. Venice, they didn't produce nothing. They would just take stuff from other people and finance holy wars to get that money and then uh, become loan sharks, basically, and sell out, uh, give money to these kings in Europe. And when the kings in Europe couldn't pay, they would basically bankrupt, they, they would basically put such restrictions on them that the country itself would be bankrupt and then eventually it would all be owned for, to Venice. But Venice wasn't about maintaining these countries. They was just about owning the land. So they would let the countries basically go into disrepair, into total uh, destruction. So when we talk about the dark ages, these is the ones that was trying to perpetuate that. Any light that was coming out of any of the Moorish empires or any of the Moorish communities that still existed at this time, they had to snuff it out. So one of their big dudes was a guy named Kepler. They was really into Kepler, but they needed Kepler. He was dealing with the, with the flat earth model. He was doing with the plane model. So they had to get rid of him and work with the Newton model, which was the sphere earth model. You understand? Meanwhile, they're using the the dumb diversus in 15, 1453 
they're using the intercatera under Pope Innocent as well as um, Pope, what's his name, uh, Pius and them to now wage the crusading, the, cru the holy war under the Sarpy method, right, against all of the Moors of the Holy Land to be able to take all their money and set up the business situation. So when we talk about the Templars, who do you think taught the Templars how to set the banks up? Yes, it was the Venetians. Because the Venetians were the ones who were supplying the popes with the money to give the knights so they could go out, pillage, take the land, take the gold, bring the gold back to Venice, and then, excuse me, bring the gold back to the pope, and then the pope would then pay the doge. Islam? Because Venice practiced usury and used the Catholic Church as a usufruct. Look those words up. Usury and usufruct. I think that's how you spell it. So Doge Pietro Ocielo is the one who established control in the Adriatic Sea because um, he bribed up all of the um, dirty moors that were still in control of that in Byzantine. And he actually gave bread up, tribute up to Mohammed II on his campaign to shut down Byzantine and turn it into uh, uh, Istanbul. Excuse me, Islambul. Islambul is the original name of Istanbul. They just switched the N to a, a M to an N when the Ataturk, the fake Turks in them, took control and basically disseminated the country, made them stop wearing the fezes and all that stuff. So, boom. Um, there was him. Then there was Doge Pietro. Yes, usury is any exorbitant tax put on that. So if I buy something from you and I agree to pay you that money, um, it's all good. But if I don't pay, right, like I'm paying you the debt that I owe you. Usury is the interest, what they call the vig, the vigorish. Because the goal is to enslave your soul so that way you never have to, you'll never get out of the debt. That's the system. The system we're in now was created here. These are the people that did it. Yeah, it's like nominating a surety. That's what Venice did with the Vatican. So we think the Vatican is in control, but they're not. This whole system was established by the doges of Venice. This is why, like I said, uh, William Shakespeare, he started writing all of these plays to go against this. So when you read about Othello, right, Othello take place in Venice. <laughs> you understand? But really, it's an allegory of what's happening with King James. Othello is James. And Iago is the white uh, monarchy of Venice that's in his ear trying to get him to not do the Bible. Because they want, the Venetian people want to do that. They want to get the white Roman version Bible to then affiliate and put everybody else under the jurisdiction. Because remember, the Sarpy method says we control everything through religious warfare. So this became their practice. The other practice is their Satanists. They worship Apollo. They worshiped Apollo and they also worshiped Attis in secret. So they acted Christian, but they weren't. They actually worship Apollo and Attis. Attis is the androgynous God, the one with the seven. Okay, you know um, the Statue of Liberty? That's Attis. That's actually a man. That's not a woman. That's a man. So this all led to the Otto Venetian War when the Moors of the Osman Ali dynasty, after we took Jerusalem, excuse me, took Byzantine, decided that they was going to shut down Venice. And it would have happened too. But what Venice did was hooked up with the Khazars and used the Khazar as a buffer state 
urge them to convert to Christianity and then use the Khazar Swiss alliance to basically act as their foot soldiers. That's why the guard, if you look at the Pope's guard, the dudes that's in those yellow and blue suits, those are Swiss guards with Venetian rank. They ain't never stopped doing it. So everybody talking to you about the Illuminati, I'm showing you exactly who it is. It's these people. So we got Ignatius Loyola. We got Sarpy. Now we're going to get, boom, the Venetian money system. It is no surprise the Venetian system, the LTIC, because today's privately run international monetary system is a direct continuation of one established by the city-state of Venice beginning around AD 1000. That's the year that they added the 1000 year to the calendar. That's why we can't trust A, B, A, uh, A, D, B, C, because they made that up. It was a black queen in, in Africa, the image, you know what I'm saying? Like the archetype, but the actual thing, when you see them with that, that crown, when you ever you see them with the seven pointed crown like that, that's the crown of Attis. And Attis was the God people. Priests of Attis would castrate themselves, dress up like women, put on the crown and basically uh, uh, tell and sing love ballads and stuff like that. They were also the, 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 the boy lovers or the lovers to some of the doges on the low. This is what they doing now. Ain't that what they doing right now? When the Roman Empire crumbled and collapsed in the 4th and the 5th centuries, many of its ruling families fled to the inaccessible swamps on the northern Adriatic coast where they built the city of Venice. It became the westernmost outpost of the Byzantine Empire. So you see, they was under the Moors, the black Christians, from the beginning. They established an A.D. 325, when the Emperor Constantine moved his capital, looted southern Italy, a thousand miles east, to be more wealthy and more populous city of Byzantine, which came to bear his name. That's why uh, Europa fell into darkness also, because Constantine, black Constantine, moved the whole empire over into the east and went from speaking Latin to speaking Macedonian Greek. Didn't I tell you? I, this is why I'm telling you more. And these Khazars that fought with them afterwards were taught how to do the money changing, the money laundering and all of that. That's why they employed them. That's why the Swiss is where everybody go to wash their money. That's why the Khazarians are the Jews, right? The Rothschilds and these people. Right. And they all fall under the jurisdiction of the Pope. Right. But the Pope and them fall under the jurisdiction of who? The black nobility. The black nobility is who? The Venetians. These people. The true Satanists, the black, the so-called royal families that bleached into our families and then bleached them out. The Venetian Empire was organized around the Church of St. Mark which denote, which dominates the central square in Venice, following the model of Apollo, see? Following the model of the Apollo Temple of Delphi in ancient Greece, the administration of St. Mark's, the Procatoria di San Marco, functioning as the center of the Venetian state church, as well as the empire's central bank, became the largest bank in the world. So what they talking to you about the Templars? Because the Templar banks were all owned by the Phoenicians, but the Catholic Church couldn't shut the Phoenicians down because they owed them. So they shut the Templars down to cut the Venetian access. So now they didn't have to pay them. And all the stuff that the Templar, that they seized from the Templars, allowed them to pay off the Venetian debts. This is what the Crusades was all about, Moors. As much as it was about taking your land, it was about breaking the stranglehold that these devils have put over humanity. The Venetian dominate, dominance of much of the world over the next five centuries after 12, uh, the 1204 sack of Constantinople, which they financed, stretched from the British Isles to China. These are the people who funded the Crusades. This is who 
basically invaded England and set up the, the Windsor monarchy that we're dealing with now. They're not even German. They're German, but they're German by way of Venice. Because these were the dirty Moors, the dirty descended amalgamated Moors that after the fall of Rome, they fled, right? And then was eventually made themselves a part of Byzantine with Constantine. And then when he fled, they started plotting from then to establish an empire under Apollo, under Attis, under Satan. <laughs> so how does this play? How does this again relate? This relates now because from there we get into somebody like, let's move up to the 1800s now. There's some other people, but I don't want to get into all them right now. Let's get into Giuseppe Manzini. This is the this is the one who started the secret revolutionary society called Young Italy. Out of Young Italy came the parliamentary, basically uh, established the needs because they wanted him to participate in parliament. He didn't want to do that. So once Italy declared its independence, right? The Mazzini Society, which was anti-fascist, set up itself up as a political organization. But again, this is still a part of the Sarpian thing because Giuseppe Mazzini was the one who established the mafia. And guess what? All of the guys I'm telling you about, all of these niggas was Jesuits. Mazzini was a Jesuit. Exactly. Follow the money more. Let me get into the whole up. Mafia is the consciousness of one's own worth. The exaggerated concept of individual force as the sole arbiter of every conflict and every clash of interest or ideas. <laughs> Giuseppe Pitre in 1889. So again, Moors, we done just went through exactly who did what. And these were the ones who adopted it. This is Lucky Luciano. This is Al Capone. Lucky Luciano was about my complexion in real life. He was the first one. He was the one who could trace his lineage back. Because what they do is, in order for you to be in the Sicilian Mafia, you have to trace your ancestor back to that first white woman, first white woman, or first... Uh, uh, inhabitant that was there that had a baby for the Moor when the Moors first got there. Then from there, you got to trace your lineage all the way back now to the first daughter of man who had his, his who, first daughter of man who was ran up in by the giant to create the Nephilim. Remember, who created Freemasonry? The Venetians. <laughs> We're going to get to that in a minute, too. The Sicilian Mafia, also known as the Mafia. There's a book that Prince Uriel Bay wrote that y'all should get called What Every Italian Should Know. Get that book. This is why the Moors was getting all caught up with, with, the, with the Italian Mafia lifestyle stuff. Because they based all that out off of us. Because the original Sicilian Mafia was Moors. And I'm going to prove it. Here you go. Look, the word mafia originated in Sicily. Sicily has been a, a, a thing from a, a, a colony of Carthage from ancient times. Y'all know that. So peep this. The word mafia originated in Sicily. The Sicilian, Sicilian adjective mafioso. Mafioso, right? Bastardizes mafioso, but it's mafioso. Anything dealing with Moors, whenever you get a word with an M-A or M-O or M-U or whatever the Moors involved with it, it's always, that's always showing you that there's Moors involved. Like when they spell Muhammad, M-U-H, and then they spell it Mohammed, M-O-H, same thing. Mafiusu roughly translates to mean swagger, <laughs> but it can be translated as boldness or bravado. In reference to man, mafiusu in the 19th century was an ambiguous, signifying a bully, arrogant, but also fearless 
enterprising and proud, according to the scholar Diego Gambetta. In reference to a woman, however, the feminine form adjective mafiusa means beautiful or attractive. The Sicilian word mafie refers to the caves near Trapani and Marsala, which often used as hiding places for refugees and criminals. When you read Washington Irving's book called the Alhambra, he talks about how the Moors hid things in these caves in Trapani and Marsala. So the Sicilians who claimed themselves to be the direct descendants of the Moors were put under the yoke of the Italians who were under the yoke of the Venice, of the Venetians. You see, that's why in order for you to be Italian, in order for you to be the mom, you got to be Sicilian because you got to claim your Moorish nationality as a Moorish Iberian or what they call a Mozarab, right? Okay, ready? Boom. When the Moors were expelled, a criminal element evolved amongst the Moriscos that pledged their lives against the Spanish. Sicily was once an Islamic emirate. Islam? Therefore, mafia might have Moorish roots. How it might have it when you just said it was set up by the Moriscos, but whatever. Possible Moorish roots of the word include ma a ma Ma'afi, which means exempted. Jizya is the yearly tax imposed on non-Muslims residing in Moorish lands. And people who pay it are exempted from prosecution. That's don't ain't that what the um what the mob do? Don't the mob go and they get tribute money? Right? Because that's an old Moorish custom of the Ma'afi, where you had to pay the jizya. The jizya was the debt that you had to pay to live amongst us. Islam, then it means mayas, mahyas, which means aggressive or boasting, bragging. It can be marfud, which means rejected, or it can be ma'afir, which means the name of the Arab tribe with the name of the Moorish tribe that ruled Palermo. So mafia is actually named after the ma'afir, the Moors that ruled Palermo as an Islamic emirate. Okay? The public association with the word in the criminal secret society is, was perhaps inspired by the 1863 play. You see, all around the 1800s. But remember more, this is 1863. In 1864 in America, the Moors established the American Revolution. Remember it said that? Didn't we read that in the beginning of the class? So Sicilians, Italians, Tunisians, Algerians, all are Moors. They're all Moroccans. And all of them, when you do the genealogy on them, they also have Asiatic roots, which then binds the Tartary thing. Here you go. This is the birth of the Ku Klux Klan. The Knights of Columbus, who were also the Knights of Pythias, who eventually set up what was called the Gold Knights of the Golden Circle, which then created the KKK. Here they go. I ain't gonna read all of this stuff about the Knights. You already know where they at. Because it's an order. Okay, so we saw that. Let's go further down. This is the founder of the American Mafia. His name was Salvatore Maranzano. See? Maranzano. Anything with M-A-R-M-O-U-M-U, -M -M -U, anything like that as a surname, their ancestors was Moors. He's the one that set it up here in America. He's the one. Capone and them. It was Lucky Luciano. Then it was Capone. He's the one. Salvatore Maranzano. He's the one that basically incorporated the mafia. 
by linking it back up with the Jesuits, which they always was a part of. But he's the one that linked the whole Venetian thing back up. These families constitute the financier oligarchy. They are the power behind the Windsor throne. They view themselves as the heir of the Venetian oligarchy, which infiltrated and subverted England in the period of 1509 to 1715. So remember, I told you, James and them kingdom started in 926, all the way up until 1707. So that means from the 1500s on, they had been trying to break that down by uh, putting themselves as the financial benefactors to the Holy Roman Empire, the Hanoverian dynasty under George. Okay. And then from George, they used the Hanoverian dynasty in Europe to come in and then basically shut everything down. And that's when Europe started to go the way of empire, when they started to, excuse me, Britain started to go the way to empire and they started to basically take everybody's land and, and the slavery and all that type of stuff, all of that, because everybody had to be made to serve Apollo or Attis, or Satan. And their, and their bulldog to do it was the Vatican. And the Vatican's bulldog to do it was Britain. And Britain's bulldog to do it, you see what I'm saying? But again, a lot of these early Venetian were amalgamated Moors, who in a lot of these Moors that grew up in the Nazarene lands, they weren't considering themselves Nazarene, they calling themselves Christians. So it was hard now to tell the difference between the original Christians, the Nazarene Coptics, right, from this new westernized, bastardized version that were now all being put under the jurisdiction of the Catholic Church. So under the, 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 uh, the Venetian oligarchs, all of the Cathar people who were the original Catholics, they all were exterminated. The Albigensians, the original uh, uh, descendants, uh, the progenitors of the Cathars, they were all wiped out. And then all of their stuff started to be redrawn. And so what they started to do was use people to now pump their version of how the spirituality was going to go. This is where Martin Luther came from, right? This is where, uh, what's his name came from? Calvin, Martin Luther, uh, all of these guys that they sent to you historically coming and then they come and upset what everything was going down then all of a sudden everybody that's white start falling behind them these are the people now look the breakspeare family this is the families the breakspeare family bob marley is a part of this family damien jr gong marley and them they are part of it because his mother was named is named cindy breakspeare she's a direct descendant of the venetian oligarchy that Bob Marley married into when he had uh, Damien with her. So Damien is a prince in the Breakspeare Venetian oligarchy, whether he know it or not. You see? Get Uriel book, Prince Uriel's book called O.S. Economicus. Get that book, because this book, that book explains everything I'm talking about. And why the Moors, how the Moors land was taken and how it was flipped. These are the families. You can talk to me about the Rothschilds and all these other people. These are the people. These are the devils. These is the main satanic devils that's running the whole thing. B. I'm telling you. Everybody that's anybody is a part of these people's family. They're involved with them. This is the biggest one. The Albro, the Albro Danini. Okay. We Moors, we're connect, we basically connected to all of them too. Because remember, it was the wealth that was taken after 1492 that was then taken in uh on behalf of King Um Ferdinand. He needed money to finance the trip to America and all that. So he agreed to take some of the spoils and the knowledge or whatever that he got from the Moors and he gave it to the Doge. 
or he started bringing it to Venice and Venice agreed to start paying for certain things. This is them. Selassie was part of the, what you call it line, uh, Borgia. That's why Mussolini wanted to invade Ethiopia. Because Mussolini being the Italian, El Duque, right? Back in the days, um, the Borgias was trying to fund a low-key invasion of Ethiopia and all that. And they was trying to do some sort of treaty or whatever. Because the Ethiopians are considered Aryans. Like Moors, Ethiopians, Hindus, we all considered white. You understand? Because we descend from the original, because we have descendancy uh, from uh, people in our family who are from the original bloodlines of Europe. Like I said, you how is it that these people are Africans and they got their own country, but every African country is got an English name? Does that make sense? <laughs> it's spelled in English. <laughs> okay? So what's really good? So if I'm already speaking English, why I need to go to Africa to do that? <laughs> There's a question. So again, they'd rather you be African, they'd rather you be Indian, because Indios, Los Indios, means he who is godless. <laughs> okay? So remember I told you about the flood, the deluge flood. This is from 2018 in Venice. Look, Allah about to put that whole thing underwater. Because <laughs> their time is over. It's done for them. <laughs> yes, so they could be you here in America. So that way they could get a bunch of Jussie Smollett's and these, these foreign Negroes to convince the world that it's really you. If white people right now was to come into your neighborhood, put on blackface, act niggerish, make videos and do all types of stuff, you'd be going in on them. But what's the difference between them doing that and 21 Savage or, or anybody else coming over here and niggering themselves out to make, it, to make them think that this is how we all are? What's the difference? Look. Anybody talking to you about national, anybody telling you that you aboriginal to the land or talking to the land, but they saying that you ain't a more is an agent. Is an agent. They working against you because real people do real things. And the only people that's on file that's been banging on the devil all these years is us. It's us. All these RBG niggas, all these people calling themselves RBG, you came up under after Garvey. You coming up under Garvey. If you coming up under Garvey, then that means you are, again are a foreigner. You trying to make yourself a colonist because he was a colonist. He was a part or down with the American colonial society. And they were about going into Liberia, taking that land from the native Liberians. Right. And setting up a government. What's the difference between them and what the white man did here? Nothing. And then I guess when he wasn't trying to go all out how they wanted, what did they do? They locked him up. Why do you think Liberia is messed up today? The abolitionist movement was about white people trying to free themselves from slavery. The black abolitionists were those blacks that was trying to put their people into slavery. And if you think I'm playing, how come none of these niggas... Especially these ones that keep talking about Frederick Douglass. 
jumping on this man joint like that. How come they never told you that his father was a was a straight jet black Muslim? And that his father's people worked with the Seminole Nation to stop the Caucasian armies in 1864, the year before the so-called Civil War movement. I'm starting to think that none of this shit happened. How is it that they can show you pictures of buildings and all this stuff back in the days, right? But they don't never show you pictures of the war, right? Meaning people walking back and forth or people after battle round, after everything done. How come they never show you no, no wartime pictures like they showed you in Vietnam? Vietnam was the first war that people actually saw war on TV or publicly. How is it that all these paintings, you've seen paintings of people fighting. I've seen colorized pictures now. They colorize the stuff from the 1800s. You mean to tell me you don't got no picture of niggas fighting a battle nowhere? You don't got one picture of Tecumseh Sherman firing a gun or nothing? Come on, B. Come on, B. Common sense. Look, Venice invades England. It is not an accident that, Vol that Venice focused much of its attention on England. The Venetian said it themselves. The Venetian ambassadors report to the Venetian Senate, which are not public. England was the key to the destruction of Spain. Right? Because now that the, now Spain got rid of the Moors, they useless now. We got what we need from them. So now we need to go in and take Spain over. <laughs> Because they done did the dirty work for us, right? One report outlines that the Flanders and the Netherlands were the workshop of the Spanish Empire. If you can control the English Channel, then you could break the Spanish sea route to the Netherlands and weaken Spain irrevocably. It, it is uncanny how accurate the Venetian report on this is. It is, in fact, exactly what happens during the 30-year war. And didn't I tell you? From the 30-year war to the 100-year war to the Flanders War, that's what totally denationalized and bleached Europe to death. The 30-year war is when they got rid of all of the black monarchy in Switzerland and Netherlands and the islands and all of that. They swept through and killed all them more. It was the hope of the Renaissance men such as Erasmus and Colette and emphatically Sir Thomas More. He's the more that wrote Utopia. That England would become an island of great learning and benefit to all mankind. Erasmus dedicated his exhibition, his Endrington of the militant Christian to England's Henry, Henry VIII, just as he dedicated his education of a Christian prince to the Holy Roman Empire, Charles V. Charles V became the, the, uh, the first European monarch to sit on the Inca throne, right? Sir Thomas More with Henry VIII, these is all Moors. They all black, right? So he got to get rid of them. He got to get rid of all. They got to get rid of all of them. So Henry VIII was also married to Catherine of Aragon, the daughter of the Spanish king, Charles, excuse me, the Spanish king. The ability to manipulate Henry against Spain was greatly diminished. This came at the head of the after the sack of Rome and the Battle of Pavia in 1525. The French troops were so badly defeated by Charles V that the French king was seized and held for ransom. You see, because Charles V had all of the Inca warriors with him because Charles V had the had the treaty with all of the Moors going back from when George was rocking it. The Delaware Moors, because Britain, remember, I showed you last week in the class that George was called the Sultan of Palestine and Rome. But the monarchy in England, because it was Christian, i.e. Hebrew. Because James established it as such. James put the Torah and the Revelation and the Apocrypha in the same book to preserve the ancient history of the Moors from the dynasties before. So what did they do after he was dead and all of that? 
They got rid of that Bible, made their own version of it, and it started creating all of these white images of James, and it started creating these lies about him and the rest of those European Moorish nobility that they were all Satan worshipers or this, this, or that, or worse, they was uh, homosexuals and having sex with his mother. There's no imperial evidence that that ever happened. But Moors parrot shit like parrots, like macaws. They don't read nothing. They just go through and write it. And then you got Freemasons that is out here perpetuating this Venetian-based history that's fake. It's fake. All of this stuff is fake. Like I said, show me a picture of one of the biggest battles in the Civil War. So you got cameras of niggas fighting right before the war, but you don't got no pictures of them fighting the war. Okay. This is what we was dealing with. See? Here go the Doge. Here go the Moor. The Venetian Moor or whoever basically going to the Doge and even letting him know this is how we're going to do whatever. But this ain't no slave, buddy. <laughs> This ain't no slave. And in the picture, he's standing tall. He telling him what it is. And low key, this a man. <laughs> Islam, this a man right here. Same way they doing today. Here we go. Now the creation of Freemasonry. Now we pick up the story 1580s and how the Venetians created Freemasonry in England. As I said, occultism is pouring into England because now all of the old Moorish stuff that exists there, all the legends about the Moors, all that stuff is now spreading around Europe now, all through Europa. You see what I'm saying? It's spreading. So now people is reading again. People are starting to get knowledge. People are trying to get certain knowledge and stuff, and they start getting it, and they got to find a way to debt it. They got to find a way to control it, because remember, their goal is to separate the spirit from the body. Their goal is to turn people into idiots, useful idiots. And their goal is to worship and break down uh, the, the, the traditional Moorish or Asiatic archetype. As I said, occultism is pouring into England, the defeat of the Spanish Armonica, a Venetian, a Venetian grouping around Fra Paolo Sarpi, see, called the Giovanni, decided to become more aggressive. Venice puts into a puts gets into a war with the papacy in 1606. It is the jurisdictional dispute over money and the right to try criminals who happen to be under papal jurisdiction. The Pope puts Venice under the interdict. Sarpi is chosen by Venice to defend the city state and is excommunicated. He successfully writes several pamphlets against Rome, which are immediately translated into English and widely distributed. After Venice wins this battle, Sardipi is nearly assassinated, and despite several wounds to the neck and head, he survives. The assassination attempt is put correctly in Rome's doorstep. See, at that point, Sardipi becomes the most celebrated man in Venice and England. Henry Wotton, an English diplomat was in touch with Sarpi the whole time, and though through go betweens, next escalation from 1616 when the royal marriage was arranged. This marriage was the talk of England and was called the marriage of Thames and the Rhine. James I's daughter was to marry the elector of Palatine. Now remember. For those that read my post that time when I posted what, what Benjamin Franklin said when he said the Palatine Moors, right, would never adopt our ways. The elector of Palatine, Palatine or the Pal, uh, Palatine basically represents those Moors connected to the old Holy Roman Empire. Right. So in that year from that marriage came the first Rosicrucian tract is written. 
It's called the fama, right? Another Arabic word like fauna. It calls for the formation of the brotherhood of the rosy cross and the reformation of all knowledge. It is not too distant that from when Francis Bacon, who was the illeg illegitimate son of uh, Queen Elizabeth and uh, the Duke of Lancaster, who was the Moroccan uh, Sultan at the time. A friend of Sarpe is calling for shortly thereafter, another document called the Confession, again, explicitly Rosicrucian is written. It calls for the it calls the Pope the Antichrist and both are written in German and circulated to the territory to the elector of Pal Palatine. Uh, Neopolitic Kabbalism is where the description of the uh, grave of Christian Rosencruz. That's what they say uh, Rosicrucian was named after. Christian Rosicruz is actually, uh, what's his name? Uh, Francis Bacon. Okay. So basically from the Rosicrucianism, the military advisor elected was Christian, blah, 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 blah. The Bohemian crown and defeat of the Habsburgs. The elector is massively defeated. The incident touched off what? The 30 years war. There it is. And reported the reason why he was defended. James of England refused to go along with the plan. You see? So after James wouldn't go along with it, what did they do? They sent in Oliver Cromwell. You see? And then totally destroyed the original Moorish nobility, the original line, the original he Hebraic nobility that ran uh, Europe. And then from that point on, they've been putting puppet white people in there to run it. And so the banking system that we're in, the Sestui Trust that was set up by Rome, the Constitution, the, the framing of what we call the Constitution, the, 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 uh, the Magna Carta, all of this stuff, Moors, all of this stuff. You see what I'm saying? Not the Magna Carta, but all of this other stuff goes back to these devils. Who had been running this thing into the ground ever since. And because half of them was they was half original, half original Asiatic, they allowed themselves to get bleached out. And as they got bleached out, they then followed through with the main war. The war being against all of us. So now that that has all happened, they are now about to pump the next level of the plan which is to turn us, we always say that we the money, but what you're not getting is that we literally are the money now. What they're about to do, let me pull it up. Now, I remember I told you, they've been harvesting the organs, they've been doing everything they're doing, look. They are using your so-called black heroes as demonic sigils because they have created something that they are calling the Tupac EP. The Tupac EP is what's called the EpiPen. The EpiPen, remember I told you these people is about devouring your soul and using everything about you, right? To cut off the phallus because they're all homosexual. Eunuchs. They're basically eunuchs. Uh, boom. Yeah, the EpiPen. So this is what it is. Adrenochrome, you know, is harvested out of black people. So the Moors of indigenous birth have been put on what's called the blood chain on the dark web. Because our lineage, especially our children, uh, their souls are now trapped in this ethereal net. And they're starting to encode them into cryptocurrency. So the world currency that they are trying to pop off is an adrenochrome backed currency. Islam, here go the links. You can go check it. This is on the dark web. They popping it now. They call it an ADC black paper. Let me put it in the chat and then see if y'all could, if you want, you could take it off and find it for yourself. I also have this on my Facebook page. Yeah, where the giants, where the giants were back in the days is where our people, where they about to be now. So everything is about to fall. The walls of Jericho is about to fall and all the giants is about to get put up under the jurisdiction of Allah. 
So if we look at the giant being the devil in this devilish system, I just posted it. Oh, my bad. Hold on. I posted one of the links in the chat. Boom. They call it Black Praper. Adrenochrome ADC is an ERC20 token specifically designed to facilitate high velocity, cryptographically secure international trading and chemical compound adrenochrome. So this is a money source now. They are turning the adrenochrome that they are harvesting from black people, black babies, aborted fetuses, full term aborted fetuses, kidnappings, ransomings, human traffickings. They popping the organs out of these people and they putting it into a bank now where they where they got a cryptocurrency to get it. The adrenochrome compound is synthesized by oxidation of adrenaline sourced from the blood of human children. On the market, harvested under strictly regulated conditions from our international supply chain of child donors. OK, the head of PayPal, look him up. He just started talking about he's talking about this. He's one of the people back in this. Um, in the past, Adrenochrome could be purchased using a number of different cryptocurrencies from a selection of suppliers on the dark web. This made it difficult to regulate the price of product effectively. It also meant that profits were absorbed by a third party instead of being reinvested in the harvesting and production of the Adrenochrome. In the future, Adrenochrome will be available exclusively at www.adrenochrome.com. In order to purchase Adrenochrome, customers will need an ADC coin. You hear me, Morse? Which can, that's why I tell you, when you go and correct your name, make sure they take you off the organ donor, uh, the organ, the automatic organ donor option that goes to your uh, driver's license, as well as the automatic voter's registration, because the voter's registration is tied to this too. So they say that you're voting for this. You're voting for them to be able to do this for you. So Adrenochrome blockchain and the ADC coin have effectively closed the loop on the resellers and assumed total control of our product during every stage of its journey. Each transaction of Adrenochrome blockchain incurs a small transaction fee of bloodletting, which is auto reinvested into our operations concerning the global network, which is why we are now in the perfect time to join our ICO purchase of ADC and invest in the future growth of Adrenochrome. Do you do, do y'all understand what I'm saying to you? <laughs> so now what I'm saying to you is that every black person on earth is now being trying is, is about to try to be turned into this public offering for this adrenochrome blockchain cryptocurrency. So when y'all talking about Bitcoin is going to be the new cryptocurrency, world currency, what I'm telling you is that they are intending to create the first major world uh, Bitcoin thing all connected to the adrenochrome. So that means every company, every country that got black people in it that want to make money, they can sign up with this and set up a backdoor chain system so that way they can be involved with what? The sourcing, the trafficking, the harvesting, the production of the adrenochrome. This is why they want all you blacks to go to Africa. This is why Ghana just apologized for slavery and agreed to do it because Ghana is one of the main countries where this is about to go down. In China, the headquarters for the uh, Ghana consortium is in China. <laughs> Think I'm playing. Look. Hold up. And all of them is down with it because all of them take the adrenochrome. Because now what they're doing, they're going to harvest the adrenochrome and put it in the EpiPens. And they want to put the EpiPens in school.
They're going to have them in school on deck to give to your kids. Forget the Ritalin. Now you're going to start to take the adrenochrome, the binial organ from other black people and ingest it. They slow walked you into this thing with the melatonin. Remember, first they started with the serotonin. Nobody said nothing about that. Then they went into the melatonin. Nobody said nothing about that. Then they went into the what you call it. Now they into full term abortions. Ain't nobody say nothing about that. Now they're going straight to ADC Bitcoin based adrenochrome that you can invest in. So if you die or anything happen to anybody in your family, you better really do the knowledge because what they probably going to do is pop that pineal organ out and sell it to that. And the next EpiPen you get, you probably uh, 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 inhaling your grandmother, inhaling your brother that disappeared or whatever. You don't know. So the whole Jussie Smollett thing, all of this is, again, this is all the Venetian oligarchy stuff. It's all the same tactics. It's all the Sarpian method. It's all Ignatius Loyola, you see, and Manzini and the rest of these people more. Because who you think is going to sell this stuff on the black market? The mob. And who run the mob? The Jesuits. And who run the Jesuits? The Venetians. You see what I'm saying? And who run them? Satan itself. So the Smoliet situation was they want to pass the anti-lynching bill. The anti-lynching bill was set up for black people, but these black devils put a put a put a thing in there for gay rights because all of them are gay homosexuals. Right? And they wanted to slow walk it in there. So that didn't happen. So what happened was they needed, nobody was taken serious enough. So Kamala Harris, who is the aunt of Jesse Smollett, that's his aunt. Okay. His aunt wound up hooking him up through his handler. Lee Daniels, who was another raging homosexual, raging, self-hating black man, right? Jesuit. He hooks him up to do this. Then they make it seem like these Africans, these Nigerian, right? Nigerians born in America. You see, Africans again, Africans working with the colonialists to make the so-called black Americans, the Moors, the indigenous ones, look like we crazy. Kamala, Par Kamala Harris' great-grandfather, great-grandmother owned a plantation in Jamaica. She owned people. See the Tupac? See the Tupac EpiPen? The EP, the Tupac EP? Another mind control uh, doge uh, uh, Venice uh, operation. Why you think he called himself Machiavelli? Why you think he did that? Where was Machiavelli from? Who was he writing about? He was writing about the Venetian oligarchy. He was writing about the same Venetian uh, uh, sat Satanist that was running the game. And what did your man do? Your man Tupac did. Came out, right? As who? Machiavelli, right? Faked his death and all that, right? You see how they put you in it? You see how you still in it? <laughs> exactly. Polish Russian agent. But look, Ma, let me show you what the, po what the Polish people look like during the time that I'm talking to you about. Let me find that picture, please. Yes. On your left is a more look. These are the Polish people. The only people that helped during the during the war, during the, the colonial wars and stuff over here, who helped the original people was the Polish. To this day.
Look at him. Again, and where's Poland? Poland is in Eastern Europe, right? Eastern and Central Europe. As we move further to the Eastern portion, which is what? Tartary. See what I'm saying, Mors? We Asiatic. We are a transcontinental people, man. Look, this is the first pilot in World War I. This is the first pilot. <laughs> Yo, they got us so out here just bugging. And then our people is just so just willing to just do anything and just believe anything negative about themselves. Exactly. That's why they always say Polish people dumb, Polish people this, Polish people that. No, Polish people were the only people that actually came and helped. I'm about to play right and show you right now. This is the first pilot in the world war. And he was a bay for Turkey. When they talk about the Red Baron, remember when Snoopy would talk about he was always trying to get the Red Baron? This is him, buddy. Because he flew the Turkish flag, Moors. Okay. Look, and look him flashing the master sign. See, when you put your hands in your pocket like that with the thumbs out, that's the sign of a master. Look the Turkish, look at the Turkish underlings under him. <laughs> Before any white man in America got in a plane to fight in World War I and World War II, this was, the, this was the dude that was shooting them out the sky. Look at the giant. Look at the giant sister from the 1800s. Look. And that's a woman. That ain't no man. That's a woman. Look, more. Look, towering over this person. You mean to tell me these people, these things, shut us down more? That's what you think? That's what they're telling us? That's why you can't trust no Freemason. That's why you can't trust no nigga talking history that's not talking about stuff like this, Moors. You can't trust nobody talking history that ain't got no nationality. Don't let nobody that don't got no nationality talk to you about history at all. Because they trying to steal your birthright. It's Esau. I don't care if the world is round. I don't care if the world is flat. I care about the information. I care about the truth. I don't care about none of that. I care if you lying to me about this stuff. That's what I care about. Let's see if I find this other one. Again, more. This is the it, this is a recreation of the more that they the oldest fossil. Recreation of the person they found in Morocco over 16 million years ago. This is what he looked like. This is an original Berber. Baber. Baylor Bay. Baylor Beg. These are the so-called Moors, the original Moors of America. And they are not Indian. They are not godless. When they say that you're an Indian, they say that you're godless. Don't let nobody call you that. Everybody time is up more because all because Edom represent everybody pumping this lie. And that's everybody in our community right now. More. They all Edomites. They all that because they all pumping the same lie. They all lying. They all telling you the truth from Africa. They lying. <laughs> they lying. Look. Remember, I told you. The empire of Morocco is spelled with an A. The kingdom and the new stuff was spelled with an O. So this is the original flag of the Moors. Who are Hebrew. 
but we Canaanite, Moabite, you see? So we represent those tribes that was down with our brothers and sisters and them, but they was kind of hating. Because we also had some of them giants with us, and they wasn't feeling that because that was what Allah wanted them to get rid of. But these Israelites had no way of knowing how to run anything. So all of the ancient technology that was used to make the giants into, to turn them into stone, to, to, to make them small, to do all of this, the, the, the certain type of goal, certain crowns had to be made. And if they were, and if, and if spoken with the, spoken with the Latin, with this type of crown on your head, it activated and corresponded to whatever molecules or whatever was in them. This is the type of technology Allah was giving us. So they'll talk to you about the 12 tribes of Israel, but they're not talking to you about the Pahath Moab. Look that up. Because what that do, Moors, is put you at the head of all the tribes because the Pahath Moab were the grand sheiks who chose who was going to lead each one of the other tribes. Look it up. So that's this flag. That's the Moroccan flag. This the Ghassanid flag. You're also a Ghassanid dynasty. The Ghassanid dynasty. That's you. Also called the Marinid. This is the Solomonic flag that they hid in 1474. <laughs> that links us up again as Hebrews, as Moors, as so-called Jews, but not Ashkenazim Jews and Jews. Tribe of Judah Jews. This is the flag again of uh, Granada. But one of the flags, Renata, this is the flag of the Moorish diaspora. We need to start flying this whenever situations go bad or whatever. This flag will fly. This will let anybody know that they have Moorish ancestry. You can come here and be held down by the Moors. And this right here, again, is the imperial flag, the flag of the empire. So the idea of us being from somewhere else is played out. The idea of us grafting ourselves onto some other nation for some sort of protection is played out. These aboriginal niggas don't have no, or Tonkin niggas or whatever, they just waking up and they don't have no plan for you to be able to treat and get any of this thing, get any of this land back. All they doing is doing DVDs and videos and showing people uh, different pictures that we've been showing uh, since these dudes was in grade school. Half these niggas is not even, they not even past 25, some of these guys, Moors. <laughs> some of these guys is little kids. They just they just stopped watching us on, on, on the YouTube. And now they out here telling everybody what they need to do or what they not need to do. Don't let these people fool you, man. These niggas ain't got no plan to do nothing. One thing I say about a moor, even if these moors is out here adverse in houses and doing stuff and getting jammed up, all that's messed up. But you know what? At least they doing something. At least they got the heart enough to stand up to this devil, even if they don't have their shit together. They know that they right enough or they feel right enough that they going to push the envelope to try to do it. That's more than any of these cowards is doing on the internet. They cowards. They always hear making DVDs about people, talking crap about people, but these niggas is not here. When this white man come, they get quiet as church mouse. And I'm not saying you need to be a to be aggressive and radical and all that, but I am saying to say that our law loves the fighters. Our law backs those who bang on the devil in his name, whether wrong or right. What I'm saying is that we come from a conquering people. That's right. We conquered the whack Christian Africans. We conquered the giants. We conquered the white man. We conquered the Sasquatch and the rest of these niggas that was out here doing what they was doing. We conquered them niggas because that's what our law told us to do. In everybody Bible, it say that. In everybody caught on, it say that. Islam ain't got nothing to do with no Arab. 
even if the Jesuits wanted to create it. They created that shit that them Arabs is dealing with now. They can't create our self law and master. You do not have the ability to stop that which Allah has blessed. You cannot do that. Especially when y'all named Yahweh after Eel. Y'all still ain't explain that. The same God that you are talking about is the God of Israel and this, this, and that. That's the same God whose name we done took for our surname, our title of nobility at the end. And a Hebrew more told us to do that. Not these, these ones that you see out here, these, these Israelites. All them dudes, they under this thing called the apostolic secession. That's all Jesuit Venice-based dogma of the fourth vow Jesuits. That's why they be doing sexual rituals. That's why they into pedophilia. That's why they constantly calling women bitches and hoes. That's why they doing all that. Because they are nothing like the original royal order of Ethiopian Hebrews and the Morris Zionist temple of Morris Jews of Harlem or the, 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 all of the other groups that was here prior to these niggas. These niggas didn't get here till after they got rid of Yahweh Ben Yahweh. Half them dudes, is, if they not Freemasons, again, if they dealing with, next time you around them dudes, ask them if they deal with apostolic secession. Once they tell you yes, you dealing with a Jesuit. That has nothing to do with the real Hebrew stuff that you need to be into. I just showed and proof to you how the Moors are Hebrews. Even when they start talking to you about the French Empire and the French Dominion here in America, they talk about the Haitians. They're not talking about Napoleon and them. You understand, Moors? The first inhabitants of Southern Europe, Northern Africa, Arabia, France, British Islands were a race of small men who did not average the height of more than five feet, four inches. Nine. They were slight build, dark complexion. They were cave dwellers, emanations, and emanations from Lemuria. They were an African people. But when we say African, we're not talking about the continent. Remember, the first people in Ireland were the formations. See? The Moors. They also called Fomorians. They were dark, stunted race, utterly savage, using rough, unwrought stone implements. It is said that they came from Africa on ships. So look, they say that they were savage and unwrought stone implements, but they had enough knowledge to get on a boat and sail to a whole nother continent. You see how they do? They give you respect and disrespect you in the same paragraph. <laughs> Remember we were talking about the giants in, in, in Tardia, in, in Tataria? Well, here. Remember, I told you they came from the Scythians. Look, the skull of a prince of a princess of Rizan, Rizanaqua, Rizanaqua, with the tiara and necklace. In where? Poland. See, Moors? <laughs> See? Poland. But the skull appears to be that of a black woman. Because black people were in, were Scythian and they were Poles and they were Tatarians. But again, I told you in the same paragraph, they're going to act like what they saying ain't what they saying. So we say the skull of the princess of Rizankawa with the tiara and necklace found in Poland. Right. But you see, they put the dash. Whenever they put a dash or a hyphen, they lying. They hiding something like that chick Ocasio Cortez who's a direct descendant from Hernando Cortez, she got a hyphen in her name. Also, Ocasio is short for Casio, and Casio means time, like Casio watch. So she's the time of Cortez. You see what I'm saying? You see the ritual? But it says, claim to be a Scythian skull, but the skull appears to be that of a black woman. So if a Scythian, so if it's a Scythian skull, then it's a black woman. That means then that the black people were Scythians. And if they were Scythians, they were Tartarians. And if they Tartarians, they were Mongols. And if they were Mongols, they were Sarmatians. You see what I'm saying? But all they want to do is show you some Chinese looking people, some white people, 
right? And they want to be with these with these these people claiming themselves or whatever to be whatever and hide it from you. So that way everybody can live off of this great knowledge and this great culture and this great empire and all of this gold and wealth and all that. But us, no, that's done. That's done. I got literal illiterates. I got illiterates writing shit claiming that we taking shit from them. You understand, Moors? This is what we dealing with. <laughs> dealing with straight house niggas. We dealing with niggas that, that again, 50 million people on TV talking about this stuff. But you want to focus on the Moors. You want to focus on the Moors talking about this. Look. Any nigga with any, and I say it with disdain, any nigga, right, with no nationality talking to you about anything with history, if you don't slap them, you need to just walk away. Protect your ears, man. Protect yourself from these devils as we close out. Look, this was an old septrinalian map of so-called America. Look, all of this right here was uncharted because they said all of this is where the giants live. Nobody could go up in here. You see that? Ask yourself, why would they be able to chart everything else but this whole track of land is not even here? You can't even see nothing. Show you one more. Oh, I didn't show you this. What'd that say? <laughs> What'd this say? What'd that say? Look, map of the United States of the United States of Mexico. <laughs> what? What? You see how much history these niggas is hiding from us? There was the United States of Mexico first? Oh, Nick. Oh, dude. Come on, man. Like, come on, Moors. Like, yo, they really... They really got us bugging. They really, they really be lying. They really be lying, Moors. They really want us to have nothing, Moors. Nothing. Like I said, Moors, this is it. United States of Mexico? Come on, Moors. What I'm saying, Moors, is that everybody is a, the prophet said it best. There's only two races on the planet, the Asiatic and the European. The Asiatic Represent us, the European will represent those who were made or under the jurisdiction of Europa. And that's the Tartary. So it's either Tartary or Barbary. One or the other. This right here is no China man. <laughs> you dig, Moors? Look at this, though. Look at these people. This is why they hate Russia, because this is what the Russians worship every day. So don't let these people tell you that these Tatarians or whatever is not Asiatic when they're wearing the same armor, the same helmets, the same war structure, the same battle flanks as everybody else. Look, you can't see his face, but you can see how dark this moor is right here. Look, wearing the same helmet, the same conical helmet that you see the moors in, in the Moorish territories wear. Because we didn't separate each other based on geographic location. We wasn't into that. We was expanding our empire. And wherever we was at is where the empire was at. Everybody coming home. Everybody trying to get right. Look at your man. Look at your man. <laughs> Look at your man, yo. Everybody out here. Everybody out here, anybody that hate Moors, hates Allah. 
hates God. Okay? Because we are the high priests of Anu. We are the ones that preserve civilization so you niggas can have it. If it was not for Moors like Bookman, there would be no Haitian revolution. And when you see a picture of Bookman to this day, he got a fez and a turban on. But no, all the Haitians is Christian. This is what I'm saying, Moors. This is why you don't see me on tape with nobody. Very rarely. I, I, don't, I can't even be around them, Moors. Because the lies is just, is just crazy. It's just crazy right now. Anybody have any last questions before we close out? Look at your people selling out. Look at these people selling out. These are the Mongols. These are the Mongols selling you out. With Calvin Coolidge. This is why there's no such thing as Indians having sovereignty. Because in 1924, the leaders met with the American president, Calvin Coolidge, at the White House. And on the occasion of signing the Indian Citizenship Act, which was proposed by Representative Homer, right? Like Homer's Iliad, right? Homer P. Snyder, right? And signed by President Calvin Coolidge, the new law granted full citizenship, U.S. citizenship to Native Americans. Look at that. Talk about sick irony. So they was Americans had their own jurisdiction, right? But no, what happened? No, they decided to be Indians. They decided to be U.S. citizens. So these are the people that the Aboriginal people is claiming descendancy from today. These are the sellouts that set up everything today. So when they talk about the treaties that was made or whatever, these guys are falling for. But watch, watch how I really freak it. Watch how we really freak it. Because guess who Calvin Coolidge was? Oh, please let me find this. Please let me be able to find this document. This picture. That's my Facebook joint. Um, oh, damn. Let me find this picture, please, before I close out. Yeah, it's the same thing with white people. Like, what did black people do to make you hate us so much? Why do Asians, why do everybody in the world hate us? What did we do? We don't have no country. We don't got no deep GDP. We ain't, we ain't invade nobody, at least not in the last 243 years. So why are they so mad? Why they hate us? Why they hate us, but then everything we do, they want to emulate us. How you hate me and want to be me at the same time? God damn it. Let me see. Um. Like, why? What do we do to, to, to the world where you just hate us? With people we don't even know. Why would you want to create a whole currency based on the murder of us and our children? Why would anybody want to do that to us? What did we do? What did the Moors do to you when all we did was fight against these crackers? When all we do was stay to ourselves? That's all Moors do. Is to, all we do is stay to ourselves. We don't want to be with nobody else. I... That's why I say I ain't no Muslim, but I respect Allah. I give veneration to Allah. I ain't no Muslim, especially now that Allah done sent the locusts into Saudi Arabia, into Mecca to shut that down. So any of y'all niggas talking about, oh, uh, Muslim and Muslim, oh, that's the same thing. No, it ain't. 
No, it ain't. Especially if you say it's the same thing. Put it like this. Anything a dirty Moor or a dirty African or a dirty Aboriginal or a dirty whoever say is always the opposite. So if this dude say, so if these people are constantly saying that we're not Moors, then that means I know that we are. That's how we got to start to play the game. You got to mind control yourself. You got to put yourself in the, the altar to make sure these people don't come and break, try to break up your serenity by trying to get you to claim an identity that's not yours when everybody's claiming yours. I just showed you that the Seminoles work with the Muslims, the Moors, and they all moved to, to Mexico. And that there was a such thing as the United States of Mexico. So guess who was running that? But we talked about Calvin Coolidge, right? Well, this is Calvin Coolidge. Calvin Coolidge is really John D. Rockefeller. <laughs> Read Machiavelli, which is the tenets, which is the tenets of the what you call it. Machiavelli is the tenets of the Venetian um, manifesto. Destroy the world. Take over the world. Make them all godless. See how dark these natives are? Look at how dark these natives are. Even back then. This is in the 20s. Look how dark these people are. They don't look like this now, do they? Because they have more tartaring in them back then. They have more barbering in them back then. Yes, because John G. Rockefeller was president, but he didn't call himself that. He went under his work name, which was Calvin Coolidge Jr. Just like they say Jimmy Carter is really John F. Kennedy. At this stage, I don't believe nothing these people say. I don't think the Civil War happened. I don't think the American Revolution happened the way that they say. I don't believe the damn Holocaust happened the way that they say. None of this shit is real. So if none of it's real, that means that we are the freest that we can be in the world. You know why? Because we get to write the history now how we want it. And that's what these Negroes don't like. That's what these crackers and these people don't like. They don't like it. They don't like the fact that I don't have to be a Negro slave. I don't have to fall for your narrative. And I'm not. I'm not because I know who I am. I know that my ancestors enslaved all of everybody that was against our law. From before the flood, from after the flood, from Atlantis, from after Atlantis, to Lemuria, to Mu, to to the the post flood kingdoms to us taking everything from the giants to us built to us uh figuring out how to use the technology for us taking the giant cities for us in putting the giants under our jurisdiction as vassal kings from extending the empire into the earth through the whole plane and back again moors we did that not no damn african were no Africans that went up into Spain and do that because there was no Spain in 1492. How about that? So stop lying. You see what I'm saying, Moors? They be lying. You did not fight an American revolution because the word revolution means to get back to. So if you was breaking away from England, how you getting back to it at the same time? Moors up, boys down. Allah loves the fighters. We are the fighters. We have a glorious history, glorious, glorious. And it's coming right back to us now. Watch that movie, Robin Hood, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Jamie was real good in that movie. He didn't even get the burn like he needed to get, but he was very good in it. Because in it, it showed you how the Moor came back to Europe and used the white man to enslave the rest of the Europeans, didn't he? <laughs> And free all the people. Didn't he do it? I still like Morgan Freeman's role as Azim better. 
What I also liked was the fact that Jamie's name, the Moore's name was Yakub. Y'all heard that? Y'all peeped that? <laughs> Y'all peeped that in the movie? And to put the to, to put the bow on it, the kid that played Robin Hood, that kid that played Robin Hood, that's a transgender. <laughs> that's a girl. Acting like a boy. <laughs> yup. That's a girl. Because these niggas is following the devil. And I told you, Attis is androgynous. And he is someone who castrates the penis. So the, the phallus that the Moors have is what they want the most. Because we create humanity. When the giants, when we got tired of, of shutting the giants down and all that, we created races to go and serve us. Where do you think these other people came from? That's why they hate us. Well, his name was Yaakov something. Yaakov. Yaakov Al something something in, in the Robin Hood movie. I'm talking about Jamie name. But think about that. He's a Moor playing Yakub in England. That's James. That's King James. He playing James. You dig? So again, uh, anybody have any last questions before we close out? I think I'm going to post this one too. So again, everything starts with the name correction. Once we correct the name, then we move on and start correcting everything else. The genealogy and all that, you could do DNA tests and all that, but you ain't even really got to do all that. That would happen if you were going to do certain things like what Brother Toriano was talking about doing, which is really a good thing. Become totally private and be able to bang on these people from the outside. That's the way to do it, but not outside the country, outside the corporation. That's a good way to do it. But again, before you even do that, you can start with getting your nationality and your, your I, you know, what I mean, everything straight. So that way you can travel and do what you need to do and go to these places as Moors. where we can start to go back every year when they do that festival of, with the Moors and they dress up like us and all that. Imagine if thousands of us Moors, real Moors, descend on that place during that time when they doing that festival of kicking us out. And we go there and buying property. Can you imagine? That's how we need to do it. That's how we need to do it. We need to go there when they celebrate in that thing. Deep inhabit and buy up everything. <laughs> That's how we need to do it. I'm telling you. Because the time is coming, Moors. We are who we are for a reason. Don't let these people scare you off of being yourself. Don't let these people tell you, tell you that your ancestors were slaves. That's disrespectful. It's just as disrespectful to say all my ancestors came from one place in the goddamn world. That is a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. We need to do that too. We need to go and bomb the Shriners Parade. Not bomb it like with bombs, but I mean go there deep like Moors and and just stand on posts. And don't say nothing to them niggas. Just watch them. Just stare them. I'm telling you, we start doing stuff like that, they will stop doing it, Moors. They will stop because they, they not going to feel in control. It's okay to dress up like you when you ain't there. But once you there... They can't be you and they self at the same time. So they got to go back to being they self. And who wants to be a slave? Not me. So no, I'm not a descendant of slave. I'm a descendant of prisoners of war. And my people got to treat their peace and friendship that's still in effect today. That can't no nigga, can't no black, can't no Indian be a part of it. Okay? Can't no African be a part of it. Because these same Africans came here after the New Madrid earthquake, burned down the damn White House and the Library of Congress that Thomas Jefferson, two weeks before, bought insurance on it, 
cleared up any insurance money, and then they they spirited these niggas off to Canada. They went over to Nova Scotia and then sit there and made up hockey. Why you think only white people play hockey? <laughs> because there's something with them, with our brothers and sisters or our cousins in them that come from the islands or come from Africa sometime. Some of them be coming on some BS, B. Jamaicans, so long as you're not Jamaican, so long as you're not black, they love you. <laughs> they love you. But they're the first ones put up their nose and all that because they never reconciled their nationality right. You got the Maroons right there in that country and y'all niggas still calling yourselves Jamaican? Look, man, like I said, anything that you read about with French America and the French Empire in America, that's Haiti. All up until the Louisiana Purchase, that's all about Haiti. Napoleon ain't had no sway on this side of the world, not one. They're going to have to because if because because the people finding out. Look, do you see what's happening in France right now? France is in full scale revolution, full scale revolution. Are you hearing about that on TV? No, they talking to you about this homo Smullett and these other uh, boule Negroes and these self haters. The French is getting it popping big up to the yellow vest. Big up to them. They showing niggas how to get it done. <laughs> okay? Okay? I seen a whole family. A white man, a white woman, they little kid, they dog, and I guess another family friend beating the hell out of a police officer together. So again, man, long live the fighters. Long live the Moorish Empire. Long live those of us who love God, who love Allah, who love Il, who love Yahweh, who love the divine spirit that sent us here with the spirit of truth to make this happen. I pray to Allah every day for the day of judgment so that way the days can finally be judged. And now we know exactly who they are. Not this ambiguous Illuminati, this, this, and that. Next week, I'm going to try to get the actual itemized list, everybody name, of all the families. Do y'all know that on Tupac's maternal mother's side that he is actually related to, to, to Franklin D. Roosevelt? <laughs> so imagine who you are related to. So again, anybody want to holler at me about, you know, taking the necessary steps to make it happen? Hit me up at House of L at Hotmail.com. Big to any Moors who are faithful. Big up to any Moors who love who they are, who love their people, who love the prophet, who love our, who, who sincerely, who sincerely loves our laws mathematics. Anybody who loves that, anybody who loves children. Anybody that's working with us to put the empire back where it need to go. Love and respect and long life and power to you. Because we all we got. These African Americans hate you. These white boys hate you. These self-hating Freemason Negroes hate you. These Asians hate you. These Indians hate you. Your black American Negro slave niggas hate you. They don't love you because if they love you, they wouldn't call you a goddamn slave. I'll never call my child a slave. I will never tell my son or my daughter that they descend from slaves. Are you crazy? Look, man. I gotta go for a walk. Calm down. So you look, Morse. Love and light to y'all. Hit me up. House of Bell at Hotmail.com. Thank you for... Uh, putting up with my rant. Thank you guys for loving yourself enough to, to follow the truth, inshallah. And inshallah, next week, we'll get into more of this aspect of it. I think I might post this one up too, just so these niggas know that we ain't playing. Islam, that's right. Power to the people, man. Word. Black power. How about that? 
black power to all little moors who understand that black is not what we say it is. That when we say it, when, when the word black come out of a moor mouth, we talking about the triple stage darkness. We talking about the eternal forever. We ain't talking about no status and no people that were redesignated. So again, when I say black power, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about dark matter power. I'm talking about the original intrinsic power, the power that these people see. You see, everybody in this picture is around him. See what I'm saying? All of these moors in this picture is all about him. <laughs> so again, more. This is what it's about. You can have all these people in the picture, but in the end, it always comes down to you. So, honest to you, honest to the Moors, honest to the Moorish Empire, honest to the Tatarian Empire, honest to all of our ancestors, honest to all of our brothers and sisters who fought against the conquistador Africans and colonialists that came over here and tried to shut us down and trying to do the same thing today. Okay? So again, man, Islam. Peace. Hey, baby. I know. I wanted to hit you. Great. Great. You just finished. It went great. I was really bombing these niggas. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Oh, it was good. I just took the Uber home. 